is the Levels Network. I am Justin Hoddle, joined by the Triple OG, Whittaby Mason. Mace, this is grand final review time, brother. Um, first of all, I want to say a massive thank you to our friends and partners at the Tab. Uh, I had a great day. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those things. Day. I think sometimes, you know, we're, uh, we're so blessed that we've in, been involved in rugby league for so yeah. long. And you can get desensitised by rugby league when you watch so much of it and it becomes a job. Yep. But when you get to an occasion like that and a grand final that not only you're excited about but lives up to the hype mm. and the reaction, like, you know, we do the street talk stuff. You got out um, before the game. Yeah. We had some great reactions after the game. The punters were coming up to us, different jerseys. It was just a great – Day, mate, I yeah, really enjoyed it. Was. it. I just, that's why I love sports, right? It just brings out that emotion. Regardless if it's NRL, if it's NFL, if it's cricket, anything, like soccer, like everyone's so emotional. We captured that, right? Yeah. Even we, we, we rode that roller coaster with Penrith and Broncos. I had PTSD, like, mate. I the didn't know. I, I was just thinking, I, was, I feel so sorry for the players. Yeah. I'm like, that is the most heartbreaking way you can lose. Yeah. Because you had one hand on it. You've had it. And you fucking let it go. I'm like, this is not happening. I watched it again yesterday. On TV, I was like, wow, it actually happened. I was just thinking, watching, going, Brisbane should win this. They should win this. Mm. When they're up that three, I say, how do they lose it? I'm yeah. like, wow. It's just the emotions that brings out what, – what sport brings out of people. It was yeah. like – it was crazy, that was That's the beauty of sports, beauty right? Of, you, yeah. you said to me, mate, like the first thing you said to me when we got up, like we had, again, Tab, the yeah, Mickey, yeah, right man. next to Telstra, yeah, Gordy was in halfway. there. We'll get to that. We'll get yeah. to Gordy. <laughs> we had Gordy and Uppy right next to yeah. us, which was, big again, was Big Pet was rolling through. Mm. Pet represented both Brisbane yeah. and Panthers, said he's slightly yeah. leaning towards the Broncos. Gordy was all in Broncos. Uppy was quiet for a little bit, yeah. then he got chirpy at, the at the end. See him at the end? He was <laughs> pumped. He was excited for all his ex-teammates. But you said it um, before the game started, mate. You're like, Hoz, you don't realise. Like, I watched your grand final, 2013. Mm. Like, this is how it was. And you, and it's a weird feeling because I'm sitting up there and I was super nervous before the game. I don't think I've had that feeling. Someone is going to lose and it was going to be tight. That's why. It wasn't like they're playing someone when they're going to blow them out. It's like, this will go down. Yeah. This will it go was, down was, somewhere. It was the emotion of being back at the stadium on the moment – in in a fashion in which I'd lost mm. that was similar to the to the Devastation is what it is. I, 18-8 up with about 25 minutes to go, we let it slip. Broncos yeah, were 24, 24 up, eight, eight, and they let it slip. So when I was looking down, I was like pumped for Gordy and seeing him celebrating and the Broncos and it was good to be a part of it. And then the Panthers start to come back and up he's heaps emotional and I'm pumped for him. Yeah. He's been a part of that dynasty now for – you know, three. He built that. He's he fun, built yeah. that dynasty. His three years there, they went to a grand final. Every year he was yeah. there. He won two of them. Uh, and just to see that emotion and and uh, you know, be you know li reliving yeah. what I went through. That again, you know, you, I, you sort of forget there were sleepless nights yeah, for, for 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 ages after that because I was a bit naive at the start to think. Uh, that you know would be back because we had such a good team and and you know sometimes players aren't lucky enough to get back yeah. there. You were lucky. You yeah. were, you went one on one, and you got the Clive. Like yeah. you ticked, not only you ticked the box of winning a grand final, you ticked one of the greatest honors and go yeah. down with with the greats of the games of winning the Clive mm. Churchill. So what were your emotions before the game? Like how many times have you been to a grand final? Do you still feel that energy? I do. I feel it all there? because I feel that I feel the elation from the winning team. But like I remember just like. Huh, giving like Minnie and that a cuddle after the games. Like, I was shattered for them as well. Yeah. You got kangaroo tools and that with them. You bleed with them. You play with the blues with them. So it's like, so you get that emotional feeling as well. Then you got your mates who you've been with from 2000, right? Going through the salary cap bullshit, going through the Coffs Harbour bullshit. You know what I mean? It's just like, that was like ridiculous. It was like yeah. an emotional roller coaster. It was like, wow. It's like a relief. Yeah. It's just like, what? We fucking did it? Yeah. We should have fucking nearly got beaten that grand final. Everything was like going. It was a very scrappy the other way. game, it was wasn't scrappy. it? Yeah. It was just the end of the game. It was like it was on a knife's edge until Bobcat ankle tap croc in the last ten seconds. It was over. Like, I'm sitting on the bench, like right mm. with with Rainey and Raza, Roy Asatasi and Corey Hughes, and I'm like, we've won it. Like yeah. we've we've done it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> you know, like so Smack and I, we've known each other since '98. Yeah, that's Corey Hughes. Roy since 2000. Yeah, Rainey since 2002. Quick you know question, what? quick question before we move on because of the bench. Yeah. The emotion of being on the bench and not being able to like be yeah. out there yeah. and be in the moment. Obviously, you'd played what, 75, I played, 78 yeah, I played in the middle and I was like completely Gassed. fucked. And I'm like, 
I would, it was probably like seven minutes ago, maybe. Yep. And you've got a young kid called Sonny Bill Williams who can come on he goes and right. finish him. He goes, all right. I'm like, get the young kid on. <laughs> I'm double cramping <laughs> in the calves and a hamstring. Yeah. Like, and it's why like the ones that won't let go, I'm like, fuck. And I just limped off the back. Get the fuck, get the SBW on. Yeah. Finish him. That's all I said to him. Finish him. Finish he just him. like, he, fuck. It's just, he just comes on. And but just, like the celebrations of being on the bench, were you like. It was mad because you know why? Because we got to celebrate with yeah. all the, uh, the the doctors and the That was going to be my and question. And then fucking run on. Yeah. Like an absolute demon. And then just look at like everyone like, what the fuck just happened to everybody, right? You're running past the guys from the, the Roosters, those yeah. boys that were on the ground. Yeah. So you celebrate with, your fe- with, your, with the guys. Yeah. And then. You go and like console, it's like fuck. Like mm. you, you say pretty much sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like that devastation that I saw on the weekend is probably the biggest I've seen for for, for ages. I could, since I can't remember. Because yeah. of the fact that they had it. There was theirs. I think uh the 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 grand finals that stand out, obviously the two fifth two fifteen's massive because like yes. the Broncos and guess who was it against? the Broncos had it, you know, yeah, again, man. The Broncos fans have they got PTSD. Him. They just <laughs> how many times have we talked to them? Yeah, they're like, we just got over twenty fifteen. Yeah, fuck. Oh yeah. man, very emotional. Um, yeah, pumped. It was good to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, thank you for everyone that come up. And yeah, again, thank you awesome. to the tab. Um, we had a great time. We've got some big stuff coming up in the off season with the yeah. tab too. We're going to be going. No, uh, going to be going down to Derby Day. There'll be some uh, content in and around the Everest. Melbourne Cup. We stay so there the Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Tuesday. I, I believe so. I know we're definitely doing Derby Day. Mm. So uh, yeah, we'll, there'll be more to come with that. Um, but um, let's get to something a little bit off topic. Right. And, and there was a lot of uh, questions around this last week. It, was, it actually um, got a shitload of uh, comments in, on YouTube, more than I anticipated. Right. So, um, hey, boys, a couple of points on the Dally M's. So, yep. you know, we've got a very strong uh, Kiwi and in particular Warriors mm. fan base now from the uh, from our experience and, yeah, and right. our trip over there. A couple of points, the Daily M's are awarded for best and fairest. If you are suspended for discipline, as OG said, you have not ticked that box, so you shouldn't be eligible. Also, fun fact about Kalen Ponga and the Daily M's. When, the RTS, when RTS won the award for the Warriors in 2018, Kalen comes second by a point. So it was almost a full circle moment for yeah, Kalen, right? right? Uh, to beat SJ by a point, it's some sort of poetic justice. Even as a biased Warriors fan, Kalen deserved it for his year. So there's a, there's a point, and um, I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. I, I ran with Louis Brown this morning. You know me and yeah. Louis have been getting, getting after it to, together, and uh, Louis caught up with Shawnee last week, and he said the one – obviously, super – would have loved to have won the Damn. award. And, and this is um, – I'm paraphrasing now because this is a conversation between Louis, but Louis basically said that Shawnee goes, if there's one guy that he was happy for to get it, mm. um, it was Kalen because uh, those two had similar seasons. Yep. Um, you know, people were writing Shawnee off before the season. Uh, people were writing Kalen off. So he's one hit away from retirement. About that's things, what it was. That's, that's the, exactly that's the, the narrative, point. wasn't it? People were saying Shawnee should retire. And people through form and age yeah. and, and, you know, that he dipped. And then people started to say, I'm worried about Kalen's health and he might have to retire early to protect his head. Yeah. So he said to Louis again that if there's a guy that, you know, he was yeah. happy for to win it, it was Kalen. I think so too. Um, I've got – I've seen a couple now and, I've, and, and I want to throw this one to you, Mace. Um, I don't think there is a perfect system. Let me get this out of the way. I think it's I, – I, I do like – the six point system because just think I don't like if you know they're as we know most there are agendas and there's biased yep. in uh, ex players and, and they're and you're silly not to think that there is because well, I'm I, like if I, so just say if I'm yep. playing if I'm if I'm doing it and I know and I personally know like a player I'm like and he played all right and the other guy played all right and I'm like oh, I'll give it to him imagine you're if you're going to do it imagine if you're voting the Bulldogs Eels games mate yeah, about, exactly. about the way we talk about it. I'm the same look how if, we talk so I'm not fucking voting for him if I was doing a Roosters game I'm telling you right now so I don't vote I give Bally. I give them I give them yeah don't give me a mace to fucking vote for cuz it would be biased as fuck if I'm if I'm uh, doing Dally M's for the Roosters teams they, those those they're yeah. not getting zero points See? I've still got PTSD yeah. from the from the <laughs> grand final so so I like the six points because it gives an opportunity for a guy who, you know, there might be some out there that and, – and, and I believe there are there that are. still vote in that way. So the six points gives an opportunity for a remember used to pick it, right? Yeah. So it wasn't really as like – I didn't, don't know. What if they didn't have a relationship with a player yeah, or didn't which, do a which media which gig? A lot of or, players didn't. Mate, that's, a, that's how the world works. Um, it's good that current play, I mean, it, former players are doing it so they understand the game a bit better. Yeah. I've got a process for you. This, this one I think because – 
I guess the biggest part that people are not happy with, because with regards to Kalen, is that he missed so much footy. Right? How many he games missed, did he miss? I think he would have missed at least half a dozen. That's that's fair. At least half a dozen. So that one, it I think it even strengthens this case. The fact yeah. that he come home so strong <laughs> and max those points to even get in contention. Yep. The same as what um, you know Tommy did in 2021. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, uh, and People don't realise he missed those yeah. start of the four, he, he four about, or six games. He missed about five or six yeah. games at the start of the year as well or missed four at the start and then a, Definitely another four, couple yeah. Yeah. throughout the year. Um, but here's one to reward consistency and not only consistency in playing games but consistency for maybe forwards because, you know, it's always going to be – um, in in the current system, I believe with three two one, it's always going to be favoured towards yeah. outside backs and 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 uh, playmakers because, you know, you've only got limited amount of points. A player's rating system is one thing that I think has some merit, and mm-hmm. I want to talk it out with yeah, you. So, yeah. for instance, we do the grand final. Nathan Cleary, he's my dog of the week. There you go. Yeah. There's a little uh, teaser. He's my dog of the week. Um, he still missed a couple of tackles. He didn't play a perfect game. He played a near perfect 20 minutes, yeah. near perfect. So you'd give him a rating of eight or nine, I think, depending on the judge, right? You've got to, compare, you've got to put into context the moment, right? Yes, yes. Fuck it, that – yeah, we'll, we'll get So to just that. say you go through a system, right? So eight and then uh, your dog of the week. Again, I'm going to give it away. Sorry for the viewers. Moses Liotta, rock solid through the middle. Minimum seven. Yeah. You know, he could be seven, eight, like depending on your judge. So what you do is you get – accumulations of points and then that benefits someone who plays every game Mm -hmm. because then you accumulate more points as the year goes on and uh and if you're consistent so you know how we love the the question rocks and diamonds are players that he might be 10 one week for the next week you you, you want to you want to play next to the guy that's a seven and an eight every week so maybe seven's your minimum I think guys like Payne Haas, uh, Jason Tomalolos of the world, yeah. mate, they would – during their runs and Payne's run this year yeah. and, and Isaiah Yo's, there's not a – Carrigan's. Re- mate, there's not a week that those guys would be under seven because they're just not that player. Yeah. So, therefore, I think it tilts it back towards more the middles. Mm. Whereas with a half, a half can have – I see brilliance. Brilliance. But then the next week they don't mind pulling a three, two, one, but they might have a four or five kicked out on the full, put it dead, mm. um, missed a shitload it costs of tackles. Games. Cost games. So instead of a week where, you know, potentially on the same week as um, like Luke Brooks, for instance, has a fucking brain he brains them for the Tigers. He gets, you know, three points. Uh, mm. Maximum points against the Gold Coast Titans. So he gets three, but there might be other players in that team that had good performances, yeah. but they just didn't poll because they weren't in the top three. But then he he has games where you watch the games and go, what the fuck is happening with Luke Brooks here? Yeah. Like this is why they want to get yeah. rid of him. And apologies to Luke Brooks as, as yeah, but using him as an example, but I think I think that's the, the best example that people can relate to. So um, what do you think of that system? It's, I don't it, mind that system because it never it, – what the Daly M does is reward – Pretty much the best player. Like Nico Hines is the best player in a average or above average side, right? Yep. Not as many superstars, not stacked like South, you're not stacked like the Roosters. Hard to poll points at Roosters and South, right? Because mm. you've got Cody Walker, you've got Latrell, you've got like you got these star started players can always poll, same as the Roosters, same as the Broncos. So you're not really gonna get those guys. You're gonna get guys like KP, Nico Hines, or SJ that are in these sides that are like top eight sides, but yep. for them to win. KP's got to play the best. Correct. So he's always going to poll the best. Yep. SJ's always going to poll the best. Nico Hines is always going to poll the best. You know what I mean? So when you've got like five or six genuine studs in your team, it's hard for you to win the it's hard for you to win the Dally M. Yeah. I outright. Agree. And I think I don't mind that system, right? Yeah. It's, it rewards consistency, especially in the middle, because the middle gets you'd have to play an outstanding game every week. If you like you have to be pain hearts every single week. Correct. You have to have 20 carries, 250 meters, and 30, 35 and I think, tackles. I no think misses. just say with the the 27 standard games that we play, I think you have to play at least 21. Because okay. I think in the NBA to get the most value we play, you've got to play 62 out of 82. Oh, do you? I didn't so, yeah, know that. So there's a minimum games that you have to play. You can't okay. play – I don't think you should play – should be able to play less than 20 and be available for the Dally M. That's interesting. Because it rewards consistency yeah. and availability. What's your best ability, I always say? Availability. availability. So it's like it's not your fault you're injured, but these guys were like – they were there for 26 games. I think – I like it. Damn. I think there might be an argument to even go a little bit further up. Maybe. I, yeah, I, so I said 20. I said maybe it's like – Yeah, I think you'll maybe play 80% of your games. 80% of your yeah. games. You're the numbers man to do that. Yeah, so that would be around, I think, 20 yeah. straight off the bat. I think you might need to go to like 22, 22. 23 to go to yeah. 80, 
80%. I think something like that. I think a lot of viewers would uh, would agree that. Um, look, like I said at the start too, there's no perfect system. Um, and then also for the for the for the fans that have reached out to us, again, I couldn't care. Look, honestly, I thought they had both had great seasons. Yeah. I've got no allegiance to Kalen or Shawnee. I yeah. couldn't care less who – I'm happy for both of them to win it. Kalen got the job done. See, the only um, argument where the, where the Warriors fans are, they'll probably see what I just said then. They're like, yeah, you should be rewarded for playing 26 games a lot instead of, of like 18. A lot of them are like right? that. Right? Because yeah. like, if you rule that out, then it's like KP's not even in the equation, right? He's out. Obviously. And then it's going to be him and Nico Hines or like or someone else who comes second or third or whatever yeah. it is. So, actually, probably in my head, me looking at the games every single week, who was the best player in the comp? Sean Johnson. Yeah. Because he was consistent every single week. He got the guys who come in the bottom four last year and got to a top four a prelim. Like, it, it's, all these things should be rewarded, right? And I think he was most consistent. One game cost him. One game. Mm. I don't know. Maybe maybe a couple, but I just think he played – well, I don't, I don't Look, know how many games he played. Because because the, we understand the points now for sure, mm. like where he's at and, and how big that game was, the fact yeah. that he didn't poll. But, like, he's got a whole, he's got he a whole, a whole body of work. 27 yeah, games. Yeah. That's what I mean, but it should be – I think just me as a fan going, he was the best player in the comp. Yeah. I know KP's probably the more talented, he I had reckon. The, he and had he, had a had a, he had a team where – he put that whole team on his shoulders. Yep. So he won 10 in a row, I think. He would have polled every single game. And he did, obviously. Yeah. Yep. And that's all you need. He would have polled you max. You should go on a mad eight, run eight for like 12, 14 games and you can, you can get it like Turbo did. Yeah. But I've never seen a do more dominant human than 20, 21 Turbo. I agree. No one's ever going to see that again. And yep. I thought KP sort of showed that, but it wasn't Turbo. Mm. I think Sean Johnson was most consistent. So I don't know. They need to tinker with it a little bit. I think the availability they should really look at. Yeah. All yeah. the other shit they can stick with. Yeah. But I think you need you need to be no, like I think consistent. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. I think there's – so whether it's the point system that I proposed or, yeah, maybe a flaw. Yeah. Maybe a flaw for the amount of games you play because I didn't realise that was in the MVP. Yeah, MVP. The and don't quote me on 62 or 72, but it's something to do but, with but there is a, be, there Yeah, is yeah there is. There's yeah. a certain no, – okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Mace, let's get into it. I want to give uh, – I just want to thank everyone again um, who signed up to levelsnetwork.com.au that have been in their email list. Our, uh, our merch was available to the email list um, as, of, as of Friday. And um, again, just killing it. Just so much gratitude. Um, super blessed that people have supported us uh, along yeah, this journey, yeah. not only listening to us, but also copying the merch, mate. Mm. So we got the hoodies, we got the hats. Um, I just want to let everyone know about the vision that we've got. Yeah. So um, we, we really wanted to do. We're, we're in a, a, such a, a niche little market where obviously first and foremost is we, we do this review, right? Yeah. We, we, we put our content each week. We've been super consistent on it. Yeah. But we also want to drop a collection like we've done now, the hats and the hoodies that we love and that we wear all the time. Like, So in order to do that, we just didn't want to do the, the willy-nilly local – Cheap you know, shit. cheap. Get the cheap merch out. We want people that you know buy our merchandise and, and or our collection to understand that it's top shelf. Um, it's priced accordingly. Accordingly, and um, we're super proud of it. Like we love you know the the hats that we got and, and the hoodies, and um, we hope you we we know that people that are in the email list um, love them, and uh, we've got some uh, really nice messages from people, and, and lukey has been. Keeping um, keeping up with the numbers over the Sorry. weekend, so <laughs> it was it was nice to just be at the GF and and Lukey's just going on his phone ding. the whole time. Oh, it's your Shopify's coming through. Um, so again, thank you. Um, you know, we we took our time with this to get it right. Um, like I said, we're uh, we're gonna again attack it during the off season um, and get some more a, a different collection up at the start yeah. of next year you see so what we're thinking with the merch right we're like we started out as a podcast a preview and review show right yep. we're like oh merch would be okay but when we're ready to do it yeah the merchandise the collection one is live right now for everyone so if you're yeah. listening to the podcast go on levelsnetwork.com.au and you can find us uh, the hats and the hoodies. Mm. Uh, appreciate everyone that cops. Um, and Lukey's putting a lot of hard work this, so shout out to Lukey. Also, shout out to our subscribers. 18.6 thousand on YouTube. 
Um, again, a massive year. We're, we're still chasing that 20K. We had a target before the GF. That's been and gone. But we'll get the 20K, mates, by yeah. the end of the year because we're going to keep doing this. For people that don't know, we're going to be doing a mailbag every week. We might even get a few friends to come in every now and again. So there's a little teaser. And uh, we'll start getting some more content, where, whether it's uh, a, l- a couple episodes of the golf, um, some more yeah, guest podcasts. So we've got some stuff in the we've works the Pacific, now. Pacific Test Series Pac- coming up yeah, as well. Yep, we'll be, uh, we'll be covering that each week. So uh, stay tuned for more Levels Network. And to be able to do that, you have to subscribe. So subscribe on YouTube. Go follow us on Instagram, 23,000 there. And make sure you subscribe on Apple and Spotify. Thank you for supporting the journey. And we also want to thank our partners, Body Science, as well. Um, Just like the tab, they've supported us from day one. Um, They've been part of the show. And... uh, we got after it on the weekend, mate. We had a bit of a trot in the yeah. morning. Big fella, you hey, you had a great reason. Yeah. You had the Aussie reunion yeah, on mad. Saturday, and then it flowed into I got invited as well to the old boys weekend yes. for all the NRL. That was players. great. That was awesome. Just having a beer with so all the So you had Aussie a great boys. night, mate? Yeah, it was. It wasn't massive. Like, yeah. I mean, if it was ten years ago, I would have been getting home at five o'clock. Yeah. But I was home before twelve. That's a good night. It's good. That's a good Solid. night. Like, yeah. We're sitting there, and and Villandis did such a great job, man. PVL was there. It was usually with the Aussie reunions. You're just in there, mix around. You're standing up. It's only you know four or five hours. Have a beer, and then they everyone just pisses off, yeah. right? But everyone had their own uh, allocated table. So it was with with your game? Was eras. So Mini, Wingy, Fitzy, Bedaris, and about oh. Um, Bobcat, all no. the guys that played in the 2000s. Yep. And then 2010s was like Cooper Cronk, Billy Slater, all these sort of blokes. Like Gordon Tallis, Wendell. You had all these big names, which was great. Like everybody turning up for the for their era. Teddy was there. Yep. He was probably the only one from that era. But everyone will start doing it slow. Obviously, COVID's fucked up a lot of those things. But like they had a big board of like – So you haven't done this for three years. Ages, yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, from 1908, you've got your own number. So no. all the old fellas just played in the 70s and 80s and that. They yeah. go there and see their number, get a photo next to it and all that That's kind of all stuff. Time. And, and Valandis is a, he's a massive fan of the game, right? Yep. So he sees Bobby McCarthy and John, uh, Ronnie Coote. He loves them as, as, as players, right? So he's going to put more effort in. If the, if, if the players put more effort in. Yep. Like get there if you're an ex-player. Speaking of Willie Tonga and a few guys, like come. Yeah. They, so the, everyone, everyone got an invitation. Everyone gets invited who play, who's ever played for a show, right? So I think we need to make it – a lot more special because it's only a little niche bunch of people that's played for a show. Like you've got to represent that kind of stuff. I was super jealous, mate. I dropped you yeah. off uh, at the SCG. I seen Billy rolling in. Yeah, JT you, you, with JT was you there. You scream out to Billy as we're rolling yeah. in. Hey, it's Bill. Like, and I was like, fuck, I'd love to be a and part Bill's of that. Bill's a legend, man. Like he's such a good dude. Like Cam Smith As a Kiwi, sorry. As yeah. a Kiwi, not an Yeah, they invite, they invite Kiwis and Pommies there. Do they? It's a whole thing. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I just think uh, players and everyone need to really make an effort because it's all sent out. It's all over Australia. They can bring you back and. I'd probably fly you in, fly you out, put you up for the night. Because grand final week is special. Yep. Especially players who played in it, you played for Australia. Like it's you know, you sort of get those memories. Me and Minnie were sitting there having a beer with Wingy and a couple of guys and Fitzy. It was just fucking funny. Yeah. Fitzy's a head coach now. You I just forget. Yeah. Because I look at Fitzy as a friend. So how so Fitzy as a coach now? Yeah, you, I'm you, like <laughs> Billy, Billy as a coach. You ran into those guys. They got the, they're still the same dudes. No, they chilled or, out. They chilled or, out. Or, or they or they got a they speak to your footy coach. They got the coach because they know head you're off. in media yeah. now. You know, you but know they got the coaching body. head off with me, so so yeah. they can relax a yeah. little bit. So me and Fitzy were talking footy. Me and Bill, Bill and I were talking footy just about Origin and like yeah. You know, we said look what we said on the week uh, last week. Yep. New South Wales can't do what Queensland's doing. Yeah. We would have our own sort of blueprint. Oh, let's elaborate on that quickly yeah. then. Uh, so me and Mace, uh, he filled in for the moles for me on Saturday morning. James yeah. Missile, uh, Missile's eighth. First, thanks for doing that for yeah, us, Mace. Good. It's always uh, – you get asked to do this shit all the yeah. time. So the fact that, you know, like – I, I, I never push that shit with you. I never push that shit with you. So thanks yeah. for, uh, for jumping in for Missile. One of the biggest um, stories to break – let's get to it now yeah. – that we weren't able to address. This is in the notes, but we have know enough of the information. Yeah. Freddie – uh, is no longer going to coach New South yeah. Wales, so let's address that first. Um, and uh, Billy has re-signed for three years mm. on the same day. Yeah. So New South Wales coach, um, why, do you, why do you think Freddie turned – mm. I believe he turned it down in the end? Well, I've got my theory. Yeah, I just you, think they've put him in a position where it's impossible to coach. Mm. You sort of somehow get rid of all these people, right? Yeah. You know, Brandy stands down. Like, I, a, do you think I, I, I think, think Brandy just got tapped and like Bedsy and all okay. these sort of blokes go, you know what, you're not part we've got a new vision. Yeah. Right? Just be honest. Yep. 
And I think Freddie, they've, they've been together for six years. That's your, that's your crew. Yeah. How Can't important just, is that? Is, yeah, it's so important. Look, yep. at what the, look at the crew Billy's assembled. Yeah. It looks, it's mad. And they'll go on for another 10 years if they want. Yeah. If they want to, right? And Freddie's done that. We've, done, we've won three from six, right? They're all part of that. Winning and losing, they ride that emotional roller coaster with the sure. New South Wales players. And I think they would have put Freddie in that position where they've gotten rid of some of those guys or they were saying they were. And Freddie's like, no, nah, man, that's not it. Either I've ha- I have those guys or I'm out. Yep. So they put him in a, like a position where he has to walk. And I said that uh, just you after did. Origin. I said you they'll did. put him in a position where he has to walk. And they've yep. done it. I, I think you, you, you're pretty close as well. You, you probably know yeah. better than me, but here's my theory. as a, And this is – I've got no information. Mace hasn't told yeah. me anything from the conversations no. that he had with people that are at that Aussies. I think they would have gone through, through a review – I think this process would have been – you look on the other side, Queensland, their biggest um, assignment over this break has been all right, what's the number and the years that we yeah, can convince yeah. Billy to stay on. That's all they've had to deal with. I think New South Wales would have had uh, a plan B if Freddie turned it down and they would have said to him, we'll give you one more year potentially, right? Mm. And I think he's even come out and said, like, you need to prove – this is a prove year. And for me, I think – with the people that have decided that it's their last year in Brandy mm. uh, and then maybe some of the other coaches that have been in around him, they've said, we'll give you one more year but we want to put X, X and O around you, right, to make 100%. sure like you've got all the processes, you know, that you can perform maybe – from New South Wales, maybe they're saying so you can perform the best but – there's no security. And maybe Freddie said, look, I, I'm not going to do this for six months and then, like, yeah, this is yeah. a trial. Like, I've been doing this for six years. Give me three years. years. Give, me two, give me security of two years and I think maybe that's what happened. Yeah. And then once you hear already that New South Wales would have gone into that meeting with Freddie and sat down and gone, like, there's a pretty good chance Freddie turns this down. Yeah. You know what I want to know? For sure. Who's, who's next? Yeah. yeah. And what sort of plan do you have for them? Yeah. Who is it? Do you know what I mean? So like, all the, all the Freddie, Freddie has been there for like more than – he's been the head coach for six years, but he's been, he's been doing work with the Pathways and stuff for over 10 years. He's had Payne Haas, Cam Murray and all these – Campbell Graham, all these guys come through his system as young kids. They have this affection for Freddie that they don't have for anyone else, mm. right? Don't just go off last year or the year before. I think Freddie probably would have – he would have looked in the mirror and went, all right, I can, I can change a few things, right? Yeah. Just give us that chance to do it. They didn't give him that chance. You give him one year? No, he needs at least minimum two. Like okay. just to show that they have faith in Freddie. If you if you were Freddie, that's what you you would have done the same. You would have said yeah. no. Because your back got, to... your crew is that they they the, that's your family. That's yep. your uh, family of coaches. You need to be able to trust them. Yeah, and then he trusts Brandy. He trusts Mary. He loves you know Bedsy. All those guys that he's put around him. Yep. From the trainers to the doctors. Yeah, it's the like the whole group needs needs so much synergy. Yeah, that's what Queensland have with the players, the the ex players around Bill because you know you got Greg Inglis. You know, you got JT, Cam, Smith, yeah. arguably like Nate, Nate Miles. They're all like part of that eight in a row. But this is what we discussed on Saturday morning, right? Like when you look at the credentials and the and uh, what what Billy's got, when, what he offers, one, he's like less than five years removed from the game. So is Cam, so um, is JT. Yeah, and all those players that are part of his staff, not only were origin players – they were fucking the dominant for eight years. They'll go down as the most dominant team of and origin every single one history. Of them, every single one of them in that crew were the most dominant. And all the crew that are now playing were in high school going, that's my favourite player, going out in the field and trying to emulate those players. Like- Where is with Freddie? Freddie's my favourite player. Mm. My da- Freddie's my second favourite player. My dad was my favourite player. And then away from dad Freddie. was Freddie. I grew up loving Freddie. I'm 37. Yeah. I'm not playing anymore. I'm not fucking 17 about to go into New yeah. South Wales. So you can only watch highlights really these days yeah. of Joey, of Freddie. Like yeah. they're our, they're our yeah, heroes, yeah. even though you played with them, mate. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. We like, don't have that. We, we, we don't, don't have, have those that. players. So we need to find something else, hmm. right? And I think I still think so the answer is, that is Freddie. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I honestly don't know because I, I hear like Madge and I hear all these other names, Jason Taylor. I'm like, that's not it. Well, the favourite is um, was Sticky. The favourite so Sticky. I would go Sticky if I could get anyone. Okay. Sticky brings everything. But I'm not yeah. sure Stick wants that. He's been there. He's won before. Mm. Like he puts all his effort into the Canberra Raiders now. I think if New South Wales to, were – just say if, if, our, if my theory is correct, if they were to go into that meeting and go, look, Freddie, we'll give you six months – for sure they've had 
conversations with someone else who's going to sure. take it. And they're just dragging it out because it doesn't want to look like, all right, fuck, Freddie's, yeah. we're they're, ready out of replacement, ready to go. They made him walk. They're probably, they're they're probably have sack it. him. Yeah. They're not, they were never going to sack Freddie, right? They'll just put him in a position where he has to walk. I said that straight after Origin because I know what they're like. Mm. But I don't know who the next one is. Who's who's next man up? Because well, Joey said it. Joey said on uh, on you know one of the nine shows that if if you if there's a market for it, then Sticky's a dollar one. And you yeah. think like you know if, Joey. If Joey's Stick not Joey's not it, saying that willy nilly. No. If Stick wants to do it, he'll do it. Yeah, they'll let him straight away because yeah. he loves he loves that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, if you if you were you're the boss of you're Don Ferner. And Canberra Raiders aren't fucking Penrith Panthers or no. or Melbourne Storm or or Sydney Roosters who have been like not all Roosters is a poor example because they haven't been as dominant in the last couple of years. But they're not the Penrith Panthers or the Brisbane Broncos even. Like no. Canberra, still, Canberra, near, like limped into the finals. It's the they're losing Jack thing. Whiting. It's the respect thing that Ricky carries. But right? like I'm talk, I'm not not talking about New South Wales. Oh, okay. I'm talking about Canberra. Like if you're Don Ferner and you're and you're like he, he, I know their relationship is fucking like that, yeah, right? Yeah. They've been together for years yes, now. Yeah. But if you're if you're a fan, you're a member, you're a, you're Don Ferner. You're like, I know we got Madge here as assistant coach, and he'll probably run the day to day. But it's massive. Origin is it's huge. It's pinnacle still. It's it's almost like. The coaching role now is as important as a head coaching role, yeah. I believe. Yeah, it is. And like the amount of scrutiny. Have and do they have that rule that like you have to be a th- non-coach in th- the NRL? I think they're willing to – like I, I believe – I reckon they'll let Sticky do both. They'll try find a way, yeah. Because I think I think Sticks is going to get the job. I hope he does. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's tough, but like New South, New South Wales would not – Leave Freddie like that, put him in that position if they didn't have someone I that's agree. going to be like a little bit different. And, you know, coaches, Sticky's intensity is ridiculous in origin. Yeah. That's what you need. Yeah. You need these guys up for that 80 minutes. And you you know what else you need for 80 minutes? Intensity. The protein shakes. Ready to drink vanilla and chocolate shakes. Whether you need it for 80 minutes of origin or for breakfast on the go. Currently available in Coles, online at bodyscience.com.au and in independent supplement retailers. All right, mates, let's get to a couple of questions. I've got a couple of good ones for you. Um, This is uh, maybe something that we can do. uh, Oh, no, sorry. The next one is. All right, let's go through this one. Uh, This one's from... Uh, Rawari Heke again an L1 from day one he's sending a couple of questions throughout the year so appreciate the support Joey Uh, Rawari off the back of Joey last week um, you're definitely one of the L1s as well absolutely love your work boys really looking forward to the merch arriving it has arrived brother make sure you go and cop I would love to see a segment analysing each team and what they need to generally do better next year whether that is new players in particular positions a positional change for players or maybe even a strategy. For example, I think the Warriors are one massive forward away to partner Adam Fenua Blake from taking the next step. Up the wires, 2024, our mm. year. So here's my proposal for you, Mace. We'll do a mailbag um, one day, and when we do the mailbag, let's do a full review, proper breakdown after the mailbag yeah. in the next three to four yeah, weeks. Of course. So what we'll do is we'll go uh, 17 teams. Yep. Let's do the bottom five. Um, I'll go through all the recruits, people who are off contract, um, people who – like you said, like the Bulldog situation. Yeah. Who plays where? Stephen Crichton's coming. Blake Taft's coming. Uh, Drew Hutchinson Sherry's signed. coming. Bronson Sherry's Salmon. signed. Jamin Salmon yeah. is coming off the off the Judy Dench. So we'll go through and we'll break down. So next week we're going to do 17, 16, 15, 14 – 13. So right. if you're a fan of those teams, that's what we'll be doing next week. We're going to do extensive review and preview yeah. for next to season. His, to his – the second question like with Fanua Blake and Mitch Barnett does a good job. Dog. Don't Don't sleep on him, all right? He missed a couple of games but like Fanua, Blake's ne- Fanua Blake needs a Mitch Barnett yep. to do all the cleanup work around the ruck. As I said, Fanua Blake's picked up his defence – Unbelievably, yep. but he's still not the Payne Haas and the those sort of guys around the middle. Payne Haas made forty tackles, didn't miss one. Payne Haas was you know unbelievable. I mean? So he's affecting this around the ruck and fitness levels. Like he's more attack, attack, attack for Newell Blake. He gets he, he's gotten better with, with his movements around the ruck. Out he's, of sight. I mean, he's unbelievable, but yeah. he needs a Mitch Barnett. Yeah, he I needs agree. that Wholeheartedly to do like set, to do ten hit ups and fifty tackles. Yeah, it's just it happens like that. It's a balance. You got to have a balance in your cat in your pack. You can't have another for Newell Blake because he's going to try and get the Lions meet. Lion share. I 100% agree yeah. with you. One thing I think you look at and, and you need to be in it, like, so to take your team from 
a really good team like going to finish top to four. like six. You need to have, and you need to. De- I believe you develop. You, you can't buy these players these days. What no. you need to do is hard, either man. be able to develop them, or um, you know, get a smoky someone that comes over and exceeds mm. expectations. Maybe even like a Mitch Barnett and Murata right quarter. Um, but you need to have a play where you've got all right, Adam and and uh, Mitchy are those dudes, and they balance each other so nicely, yeah. just like the Penrith Panthers have and, and the Brisbane Broncos have with with Flegler and Haas. And they're the best. But that's gone. the best. They're the two best examples: Leota and Fisher Harris, and Flegler and Payne Haas. Yep. They're two of the best, like four of the best front rows in the game for sure. But uh, I also they, believe in order to be an elite team, you need to have someone coming off the bench yeah, that that's emerges. That's so hard to have two yeah. starters. Yeah. You go through everyone's uh, front rows, like Tino Fodawaka, that's probably up there as well. But like, who the fuck comes off the bench? Yeah. So know, when like, the, yeah, with the, the Warriors, Broncos, that was Palacia. Yeah. Yeah. And Kobe Hetherington, he's a defensive player, yeah. but uh, Palacia is gone. Yeah. Titans. Flegler's gone. That'll. That's going to be. That's going to be leaving big a hole. They got so. They got some big boys coming. Xavier off the Willison. Bench. The Willison dude. He I can, like he Willison. Can fit in. I think another preseason behind yep. Payne Haas, and he'd be like, he'd be pushing for a starting job. I think. I think Kobe Hetherington will go to starting front row next year for the Broncos, and Xavier Willison will yeah. be coming off the bench. Okay. And I they've think, also got yeah. Marty Tapo coming off the bench as well. But yeah. again, like that that fucking play cost him eight grand final. Man. Yeah. It's all um, about balance. Yeah, so I think I love Jazz Devanga. I love Dylan Walker. They probably need one more big body, like whether it's Bunty developing and becoming lot, there's that There's a lot guy. of young kids over there. I watch reserve grade. They've got some really good young kids who can – but the jump from reserve grade to being a proper NRL player is so big. Yep. They just need a little taste here and here, like a 10 games in one year. You know, Hopefully just come off the bench and maybe start a couple. That's what a, a few kids did this year. Because what happens under fatigue with this six to, six to go rule? Yeah, they let you down. Remember watching the Manly uh, against Blacktown, Warriors versus Blacktown, and uh, Jacko was telling us he's gone, we've got a front that row, kid, we've got a back number row. Eight, whoever the number I don't eight know, was, I, don't know I can't remember what his name was, but I, do, I seen him and I was like, That's the dude. If he can, Warriors, get, if he can get 15 to 20 minutes out in the middle, yep. then you're talking. Then you can't have 10 yep. minutes, man. Yeah. He's going to be your bargain buy that you, you get in a little window yeah. and if you've got a rock-solid 13, you get these young players emerging. Eventually, you're going to have to pay them. But if he goes on and continually um, goes on to improve yeah. over the next couple of years, you could have yourself a nice little window. So everybody has a couple of those kids, but in reserve yep. grade. Yep. Just can't make the jump. Yes. It's a big comes, jump. It comes back to coaching. Yeah. Yep. And yep. the development and the leadership and the mentoring. It's a, it's a lot of work to, right. to get these guys to play 200 games. Yep. You can get them to play 20. Yeah, you know, like over like four or five years, yeah. but like that's 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 not that's not it. Yeah, you need you need yeah you need the you need those guys comes off the bench and goes bang I'm here and I'm pushing for a starting spot. Um, quick, st- what about um, Stephen Crichton? He's only uh, he's only 23 years old. He's played 100 games. He's won three grand finals. He scored in every grand final. He's fucking freakish. We'll get to mate, him. Yeah, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, this one's from Tommy Young. What's up, lads? Bronx Nation off the bat. Commiserations, Tommy. Uh, question: Would you love to see you two? Oh, would love to see you two lads do a team draft similar to how the NBA do a team LeBron versus team Giannis. You're both team captains playing back row to keep it even. <laughs> we know the OG can play front row in brackets. Slashy. Picking from the 2023 playlist. So who's your one to sixteen? That you would team up with. So you you want to do that for the for the punters? We might come up with that. Um, yeah, now or later. No, not now. Yeah, okay. No. That's going to take a lot, day, of, a lot yeah. of thinking. Me and you will come up with a team, and then we'll go through our decisions. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a little draft together. Yeah. Uh, it'll take too long Seems with content, fun. but we'll we'll go through our teams together, yeah. and we'll have that ready for you next week. Yeah, okay, Tommy. So uh, once you've picked off the board, we'll, we'll we'll go through our decisions. Who we picked first, yeah. positions That'd we valued. Cool. That'd be so good. we can go through it with the punters next week. Um, we'll do that for you next week, Tommy. Um, this one is from Tommy Neal. Let me get this. Sorry, I'm just getting rid of it. Um, the boys keep posting the unreal content. Listening on, on Spotify, waiting for the pods to come out and set up my week nicely in a shitty winter's Glasgow. <laughs> All the way at Glasgow, Scotland. Jeez, Scotland, Glasgow, yeah. Scotland, yeah. Um, the way that this Panthers team and even organisation runs is having some resemblance to the Pats dynasty. Yeah, right. Ivan Cleary being a staple for fundamentals, being executed perfectly like Belichick and that – Cleary Luai combo like Brady and Gronk. Mm. Now let me I'll just stop it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's more Cleary and Yo. Yeah, hundred percent. I love Luai, but I think those two guys are better uh, yeah, comparisons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In your eyes, who would you compare the top eight in 
Wait, wait, let me read that again. In your eyes, who would you compare the top eight to in the NRL? Love the work troop. Troops buzzing for the 50k subs in 2024. <laughs> so um, don't worry about top eight because we, it's going to take too long. But do you think it's a good comparison? Do you think now um, the word dynasty's been yeah, thrown around? No, three, well, they always say even in, in like NFL they they don't think the Pat I mean the, the Chiefs are a dynasty because they right. haven't won three in a row. Three in a row yeah. Panthers just did that. It's a dynasty. It's yep. Probably one of the best clubs in the since the NRL era started. So 1998, I think it's the most dominant. Because they've won three in a row. They've been in four. It's up there with Melbourne. Yeah. It's yeah. Up, you know, Melbourne's had like 15 years of dominance. So 2006 to 2020. I'm, I'm going to put you on the sp- – yeah, that's a f- – look, again, it's the continued success three mm. in a row that's so tough. It hasn't been done since the 80s, yeah. the Parramatta Eels. And that's a different time and totally um, different. so much it. respect to the OGs. Don't, yeah. like, don't get this twisted, Parramatta fans, but it was a different era. It wasn't professional back then. People were doing a nine to five. Mm. I think you, you've got to understand that from the NRL era, from 98 onwards, when it becomes super professional, yeah. this is like all players do now. What Penrith have done, yeah. I, I find it, I'm going to find it very hard to replicate. And uh, yeah. when you look at this Penrith Panthers team, the systems that are in place, the plays that they've lost, for me... That's what replicates Melbourne, right? Everyone puts Melbourne as the standard. Yep. Because Panthers have been doing this, you're losing kick out, you're losing Appy, you're losing... And then they're like, oh, here we go. Here's Sorensen. Here's Mitch Kenny. Win another one. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's it's ridiculous. Because that's what Melbourne did for years. Mm. Can they keep doing that? You just lost Critter. Who else? Who, um, uh, uh, Spencer Lenu. Yep. So two genuine... Rock stars in their team, been there for the last four years. Even, do we? Do they go again? Even role players like Jamin Salmon, um, Charlie Staines the, the year before. Like those players are like squad members that are mm. important from like eighteen to twenty five. We talk about it all the time, mates. Yeah. The difference between teams that make the finals and don't are squad members twenty to twenty five. Yeah. If you, everyone's got a pretty much every team's got a pretty mm. decent core. Yeah. If you've got average twenty to twenty five uh, members, then you're going to struggle and. Every year you get the fucking um, Lindsay Smiths of the world that's just come out of nowhere. Um, we've heard about Taruva now for a couple of years, mm. but he goes on like Taylor May gets injured. He was outstanding, Taylor yeah. May, last year. Mm. He gets injured fucking in the – I think it was the club challenge at the yeah. start of the year. Misses a whole season. Taruva was fucking unbelievable yeah, this year. He's outstanding. Like they just keep producing them. Um, and I dare say they've got around. about five – just coming through the ranks. Yeah, they do. Like they would they not do. be stressing that much because it's just like it's it's a nursery out there. Mate, we ran into uh, Benny Hardin. Uh, yeah. I told you, takes care of uh, the pathways and the development yeah, yeah. and his assistant coach. And then Matty Cameron, who uh, was my assistant coach. And like the systems that those two guys have built with obviously Ivan and, yeah. and, and them having trust in those guys. Like those two are, are massive, super important yeah. as to why – the Penrith Panthers are where they are. And, and, it's crazy. I'm not, sure funny. Where, I'm not sure whether they whether they can fall off. I so I don't know if you heard me speaking to Camo, and there's such a like aura around them right now. Yeah. Like we said to Camo, it's like, how are you feeling? Like fucking light work for you now, yeah. three in a row. And he goes, "What are you going to do?" He goes, "We've done all the work. We'll mm. see what happens." And like when you see the game play out that way, it's like they meant that. It's like he was exactly right, yeah. right? Like you that can't is, overthink yeah. it. The, and, and when you look back on it, Mason, we talked about the experience of being in grand finals. Yeah. That's – he's the CEO of the club, I believe, now, a chief executive CEO. I know he's the top dog. Yeah. And his response is, what are you going to do? We'll he's put in all the work. Game. We'll just see what happens. That's the three <laughs> yeah. in a row. I know. That's to go down as one of the greatest teams of all time. I was like, see what happens. The work's done. I was like, all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. Camo's always been like that too. Really yeah. understated, um, a, re- a bit of a smooth talker. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm so happy for him. Just like both un- those two guys. Underrated uh, swag, but it's oh, like, yeah, yeah, all right. Low-key swag. See what, see what like the Broncos can do. Yeah, let's see. Because we know what we're going to do. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. We're going to put that shit out there. Can they get with us? Yeah. Loved it. We'll Loved break it. Break it down soon. Um, all right. This one's from NGX. Hey, boys, been watching since day one, but never one thing, never one to comment. Just wanted to know three things. Um, this is obviously before the weekend. Willie will be hung on Sunday. So next check, next week, do a run it straight challenge. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mace, jokes aside, but you would tell up anyone who wanted to come down. And we will be doing a run yeah. club on Saturday morning as well. Details to come on Thursday. Uh, number two. Would you rather be the best 14 of all time or – and that's including rep footy and club footy. So you dominate on the 14 jersey. Like six man. And year. then you get like 
you come off the bench for New South Wales and you come off the bench for Australia or be average for your club in one position for a long period. 14. <laughs> so I think the bench now, like yeah. it's, it's just as important as the starters. I agree. Like, see Spencer Lenya and all those sort of guys. You just, you're just not copping those hits at the start. Yeah, and you get 20 so reps. So it's jerseys. very important yeah. like to be a 14. Yeah. Like, I think Spencer Lenya is the best 14 in the game. Yep. So if Spencer Lenya, for example – And he was that close of getting New South Wales – and if he wanted to play for Shea, he'd be that close. I think, yeah, I think Spencer Lenu is and Cheese are probably the best examples of the last, mm. you know, 10 years where Cheese was playing off the bench for so long and then he played for the Kiwis, Damn. right? Because he had Cam Smith and Harry yeah. Grant in front of him. So just say Cheese comes through, the, or he does, with Harry Grant. Harry Grant starts mm. his entire career. Cheese doesn't play 13, but he stays in that 14 jersey, but then plays Kiwis and, for 30 yeah. tests. Or you're me. And you play 120 games, yeah. You're not and you play. Do that. You're just an average player. 100. percent I'd rather yeah. be cheese. Because you're not copping the, <laughs> the start of these games are yeah. re- relentless. Yeah, like everyone's trying to kill each other. It does die down a little bit, just yeah. a little bit. But like you know, you're not copping those like Fisher, Harrison, Leota, and Payne Haas. They had to run straight into the teeth of it. Yeah. How important are bench oh, players? Oh man, these days? the yeah. bench players change the whole the whole level of the game if they're good enough. Yeah. I've seen Spencer come off off the bench and totally change the game. Yeah. Leota or Fisher Harris might be a little bit off. Bang, get him off. Yeah. He was um it's funny, he didn't have the impact in this no. grand final. I thought uh, Lindsay Smith had a bigger impact. Lin- Lindsay Smith right. come on Mr. and played bigger defensively, he was Yeah, he, he was come off on and played more bit. minutes. Uh Spencer come on at the time when Broncos were just getting back into it. Yeah. Just before half. And that's a big thing, right? People don't understand momentum. Yeah. You know, like you, you can only be one person out there, right? Spencer's a an hard running person, but when the momentum changes, you're under the pump, you're coming off the line, you're getting the, the awful ball that Payne Harsnett would get, and you're getting a third or fourth tackle, bang, everyone's into you, coming out of the corner. Fucking changes. Yep. But when you're front foot, front foot mentality, you're getting that ball on the 40, the nice wide pass, bang, stepping in between people, carrying people on your back. That's that's what yep. usually Spencer Lenu comes on. Yeah. And, he, and that that's what happens. He didn't have the momentum in the second half when he was starting. But that's just the way it goes. Yep. Some other players come on, change momentum, momentum's back with Penrith. Like Leota's last 20. Yeah. That was in, that was ridiculous. Yeah. That's why he's my dog of the week. All right, let's get into that then. Your dog of the week, Moses Leota. Yeah, Moses Leota. I think he started the game off awesome, right? I've got his stats for you. You want me to read yeah, out his stats? Yeah, I saw him. I think he played – I thought he played more minutes. 15 carries for 163 metres, 45 of the toughest post-contact metres. Mm. You should see the post-contact metres. Yeah. I reckon it's the lowest across the board yeah, yeah, because the defence was fucking outstanding from it both teams. Man. For him to run 163 metres, but I just put it down to when the – Two com- tackle breaks, the, 19 tackles and one try. When the comeback was on, when Cleary made that break, I know like everyone's like, oh, Moses Leota, he was just there. Like, Who else was there? Mm. No, one. no one. So Cleary would have got tackled in the corner and they probably would have saved it. But that's what started the, the fucking the comeback. So many players finished Edwards, their assignment yeah, on that Edwards, push. Well, Edward, Edward wasn't there. He was on the other side. He got caught up. Mm. So Leota's there. Like, that's a big play. Mm. Massive play because he could have ran that block play and just went, Stop. yeah, that's it. Stop. No, yep. just kept pushing through the rug like a good prop does. Yep. And you get those little tries. You get rewarded sometimes. Usually the fullback comes up from nowhere. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And he gets it. But he was there. Yeah, 100%. So like, and then after that, he just continued the momentum. Continue, continue. Like there's hard runs through the middle, hard hitting. He didn't stop, man. He did not stop. Every minute that he was on there, he was working his ass off. Well, I've got some um, stats for – well, I'm going to break down the game in moments. Yeah. When he ran over Paddy Carrigan, I'm telling you right now, we've seen it from above. Mace, I pointed yeah. it out. He come off second best in that. He was struggling. Yeah. It went to a scrum, but we'll get to a little bit later. And he kept on going. It reminded me of uh, Sam Moe off the kickoff straight into Gifty. Yeah. And he fucking hammered yeah. Gifty, right? Gifty was pumped. And then Gifty, like, had to, we had to stop straight away in our grand final. And I don't know how Gifty played the entire game out yeah. of it. He was fucking busted. Um, some players had fucking died. Garrigan went at it and too. And they go to another Garrigan, level. Garrigan, he's stats Garrigan was loving it. Yeah. It. But it's just for him to put like that's the difference. Carrigan's like six foot three, six four. Uh, Leota's probably like six foot. Just those three inches of like going through your chest. Like if Carrigan dips, bang, it's a different. It's a, you're probably rocking Leota's head back, but mm. you're not putting him on the ground. No. But because you stay tall mm. and that bull just runs straight oh. through your chest with a little bit of footwork, it's it's hard, man. So yeah. That's why Fisher Harris, the body type, it's hard to hit him because yeah. you got to dip when you're six five. Yeah. You know what I reckon happened in that contact? I think. 
so he got Paddy right in the chest. Right in the chest. I think Paddy's knee flicked up and hit, hit him cork corky. right on top of the leg. Because we're looking at him going, he's limping. Yeah. I'm like, it's not. It doesn't seem structural. It just yeah. seems like a mad cork. Yeah. You just got to get over that shit and run yeah. it through. And he did. And he did, and he and you're right. He scored the try to get him back in the game, but that was off my body science dog of the week, yeah. Nathan Cleary, aka Clive. Hard to go, hard Clive to go second. past. Twenty two runs for 167 meters, three offloads, two line break assists, one try assist to get them back in the game. Two Moses Liotta, and one try to win them the game, to win his second Clive Churchill Mace. Yeah, man. Is did we just witness immortality? You witnessed probably like a top five halfback of all time, of all time already. Go up. Go Maybe up. top, top. Just top, I, th I think it's him, Joey, and Thurston. I think he's top just, three, and that's like right now, right? Just give him another five years, see what stats he's going to rock out. Yeah, right. You're probably talking. Years another, old. You're probably talking another fifteen tests, another fucking fifteen origins, yeah. another two, another hundred and fifty games. Yeah, put that on top of his hundred and fifty now. Three grand finals, three Origin wins, World Cup win, two Clive Churchills. Like he hasn't just won the Dally M because he's been injured. You yeah. know what I mean? Like so that's just, that's off the top of my head what I know. I'm not yeah. even going into it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's it's ridiculous what sort of career he's putting. And he's halfway through. He's halfway through. You compare what Cooper Cronk, Joey, JT were like when they were 25, just compare the resume. We probably will in a couple of weeks. But what he's doing now is he's on the trajectory trajectory to go and match those blokes at the end of his career. Stat wise. We're not, I don't know about the eyeball tests and everything like that. You talk, every, every, everyone's going to say the system, all that sort of shit that we put on Cooper Cronk. Mm -hmm. So it's like you just go off raw talent and what his numbers are. I was one of those guys. For, same, I, I same. Like I was there for like two or three years I was on him. I'm but gone. I didn't realise he was fucking 20. No, I was one of those guys that thought he was a system guy because I look at origin performances mm -hmm. and I still had my doubts. Like I seen a progression of him going becoming an immortal, but I was like – when I think of Joey and and uh, and JT in particular, in my era, apologies to everyone that come before him, 37 years old, but in my era of watching rugby league, I, th I think of those two guys in particular, I'm like, yeah. they were system proof. And I've said it before, Cam Smith, Joey and JT were my, my top three. We'll have a look, sorry, what he did now, in the last 20. That's not system That's proof. what I'm getting that's, to, mate. Sorry, this, that's just fucking, I want it more than you. Yeah, when I looked at the w what he did in the last 20 minutes, in more, I think in more recent history for people that have been watching game for the last five years, it's a different arena, but it reminds me of what Munster did with the worst Queensland team of all time. Like mm. I think in the last 10 years, if you put to, to put together a body work, whether it be an origin series or a game, I was speaking to Money yesterday and I said yeah. like Money was like, what the fuck happened? We were just yeah. – we were just, uh, stunned. We Still. were stunned. We were stunned and we were just talking about like what happened. He was, you know, obviously fucking pumped for Nath and, you know, what they'd done. And I said, I said to him, I said, money, like, I haven't seen a performance like that since what, how, the way that you, because I know they were favourites to win the game, but at 24 8, they were fucking heavily underdogs. Like, what do you mean? They should have lost. Yoey was off the field. Luai was off the field. Um, you know, Jack Cogger's a journeyman. He comes on and plays seven. He starts getting on ball, off ball. Yeah. And he wins in the game in a 20 minute period after. He got making a lot of mistakes. We'll go through it. He made he had a couple of bad reads like the Reese Walsh. Yowie, when Yoey when went when um, I think it was the second try. Yep. When he got beat cold by um, Ezra, Ezra Mam, Mam, the second try. So like he should second and third try. He should have covered him right. He missed both. Yeah. Even though he did. Know, you know no, he mean? did. And then he rushed up on Walsh and he missed that. Yep. It's like shit defensively, and your confidence should be fucking down. What did we say about Reese Walsh the week give before? A shit. What did we say about Reese Walsh before the week before? Throws an intercept, what happened? Keeps on going. Yeah. Other players who don't have that dog in him yeah. or don't have that immortality in him yeah. would have gone into their shell, gone, the game's gone, but Nave Not kept clear, on going. Man. He kept on going. And this is one point like that I I think he's ready there. I think he's an immortal. I, I don't care. Yeah, immortal's he, fucking a bit rich. I don't, mate, I'm 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 gonna say this is my opinion. Yeah, like okay. he, I think he's already there. If he retires tomorrow, his stats are as good as fucking anyone that lines up that you can like we've still got players that are about to go into it, right? You'd like to think Cam Smith's a lock, JT's probably a lock, and then you've got players around like Billy G.I. that could, you know, are going to be in the discussion now. Do you reckon he'll have better numbers than Cooper Cronk? I think so, yeah. Yeah. But and and this is And the Cronk's not near immortality, being immortal. Yeah, but like it's, it, it comes back to the eye test as well, like yeah. you said before. Like you can have the stats. But then you've also time, five years. But like this is my point yeah. with the mace, right? People were saying, "Oh, take it easy and mm. don't build the pressure and that." He's been in a, a prodigy since seventeen. Yeah, probably. he's been like 
if he like over the last three or four years, the amount of pressure that he's had on him to not only get Penrith to a comp, to win in competitions, but also all the also all the pressure that's come with the New South Wales team. He's does he look like the pressure bothers him? No, no, no. He's like been in the system and done this for years now. Like. I, I don't think there's anything that you can put on him and, and put these tags on him no. that are going to go, oh, fuck, I hope I don't live up yeah. to the expectation now. He's that dude. Yeah. He is that dude. And, uh, it was the most impressive uh, 19 minutes I've ever seen. Yeah, it's up there, mate. I was just like, like it was 24-8. It was game over in my no, head. No. I'm like, it's game over. In a grand final. How the fuck do you come back? Yeah. Little dummy, played the clock brilliantly, right? In my head, Brisbane played great for 20 minutes and nearly won a grand final. They won the third quarter. And, like, he just went, you know, give me my turn because mm-hmm. they just had momentum. How do you break momentum? Three tries in a row. He was part of all those three tries. It was on his edge. Mm. He would have been filthy. He's like, give me the fucking ball. Yep. And Brisbane were on. They were on. They, were, they knew the comeback could be on. We just need to shut him out a couple of times, shut him out a couple of times. No, you can't. Little dummy, Mr. Simon, bang, try Leota. Another one, critter. Bang, bang. But his nice orchestration, shape, his orchestration of everything, the kicking game, everything was just down to him. Yeah. He just went, Luai's off, give me the fucking team. Cogger, yeah, he was off. Cogger, just sit the fuck back. Yeah. This is my team. Yeah. This is my you time know, to shine. This is it. I, I, I watched it back and I listened. Uh, uh, you know, during the game, you can't see it as much. Cronk was right um, when he was – he was. I watched it back on KO. And um, – what he did was because he knew that he had to have almost the final pass or the final yeah. big moment, he pushed Cogger up into the seven, which would normally be Yoey everywhere. And him with Jerome out the back, and he got out the back, and then when he when it was close within the ten to fifteen, yeah. then he got back up on the ball. It's like who's the one who passed the ball to Critter? It's not yeah. usually him. Yeah, but it yeah, was it is. him then. He's normally the first yeah. one. Hey. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? So then it's block, and then the other one passed the critter. Nah, bang, give it to the big give it to the fucking big game player. Yeah. He slept on. That kick that he put in, like, I know I know Brisbane fans would have been going, fuck, Reese Walsh was held, mm-hmm. right? When Taruba come through, all you got to do was touch a person, right? And yep. they're held. He got touched and then he got jumped on. But what about the silky touch on it? How do you do that? Yeah. Like a couple of times, even when Twice. he did nothing, yeah. he got Katoni pushing up, little left foot. Yeah. Pressure on that little kick. Just say if it goes out in the full, right? Yep. And then Brisbane go, fuck, there's another t- two minutes Seven off the clock. Seven tackle set, game over. Seven, yeah. Little things like that. And he was getting the ball and I was just like, wow. If Cleary wasn't so dominant, it's nearly critter getting that Dally M. He's close to it. We've got some big moments and we'll get, we'll get yeah. to that as well. I've got a nomination for a Body Science Dog of the Week from the Beak, from Bloke in a Bar. He sent a text in the, uh, <laughs> in our, uh, on our uh, socials. I'd like to put in a nomination for Dog of the Week for Old Boy Ivan. Ivan Cleary definitely got that dog in him, married a genetic specimen, then won three <laughs> premierships, <laughs> sprayed his son after number three and said his son owed him at 6 a.m. in the morning on live television. Ivan's got that dog in him. So yeah. I don't know if you've seen That's the – uh, there. Tell us, give you some context. The, uh, so he had an interview the next day on Sunrise and uh, he was blind. Really tough, he was the best. <laughs> he was blind. He had You can tell he hadn't slept. Good. And he was just so loose. So – which Shout one, out. Nathan or Ivan? Ivan. <laughs> he's going. He, he said, "You're lucky that I'm, you know, married your mom, and and uh, otherwise you could have had a, a lesser, <laughs> lesser gene pool." Oh like, my god! I'm for it. it was hilarious. Um, I love that. Carl was fucking cracking up. Carl Stefanovic yeah. was uh, was was interviewing. He was losing it, and um, but the, I want to get to Ivan. But the play, yeah. I, I mean, he's he's, 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 up, he's up there now. He, there must be something special about him. The coaching tree that's come from Ivan now with the yep. Websters, the Serraldos, and all these sort of blokes, and I'm like, yeah, he, he must be all right. Where is he? Where do you like you got? We got we got Wayne, and so we talked about. I I just spoke. I just look at it. Like, I look Nath. at it with Nath, and I go, I got to give him five more years, yeah. and I know he's going. His trajectory is like he's going to be with the greats. Like right? you know he's going to get there, yeah, but you just get, don't but want I'm to not say do it now. now. Like he's already pretty much there. Like he's ahead of like most halfbacks. What about Ivan? But Ivan's he's got to be in the conversation, right? Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Oh, Fuck. Four of the best. People are going to go Jack Gibson. People are going to go Ricky Stewart and like Robbo. But I'm like, you got Bellamy and you got Wayne. Yep, they're locks. They're two. for everyone. And then I'm like, fuck. Why, why isn't he in that conversation now? He is for me. I think three he's in up a row in this era, right? That's done. In That's my done book. because I think this is the hardest era to win in. Robbo went back to back, and then he went, so he's won three total as well. Yeah. Um, so I think. For a long time, it was Wayne and Bellamy were locks for everyone. I think Robbo put himself into that conversation as the next guy. I reckon Ivan has overtaken Robbo. You know, I think Ivan Cleary doesn't get that much, doesn't give his get his flowers because they they give a lot of compliments to the assistant coaches that he's got. 
You think? Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. A lot of coaches go, oh, oh it's because Trent Barrett was there. It's because because Serraldo was there. Yeah. It's because because Webster was there. But so, who's been the big dog for the whole time? Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, I'm telling you, yeah. with the coaching world, they're yeah. like they're not giving him his flowers because he's had a really good assistant coaches. But like, he's the he's the dude, right? He is the dude. He's like, yeah. I love the way he just like the way he communicates, the way he does presses. He's fucking super smart. Yeah. And you can be smug. You won three in a row. Why wouldn't you be? Fuck, I'd for be the rest smuggy of your career. <laughs> He's got that Cam Smith smugness. Yes, <laughs> he does. He's got that Queensland smugness. He oh, does. So I know what it looks like, man. He does. I've seen it. Um, you know what they should do? New South Wales should go. Yeah. Coach fucking New South Wales. He might be too technical for Origin. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, I don't. I don't. What, know. What about I don't know. Does he want to? Does he want to? I don't know. Probably not. Yeah, like I don't but know. But if, if there's one club coach, fucking it's him, right? Because like. Give him a of, crack. Of, you've, you've been coached by Ricky in, and there's and systems Bellamy. that are in place, yeah, and Bellamy. Like if there's a coach that can get the job, it's it's. But I mean, you don't, you don't have to overcome. Pardon? He's in the box. I know yeah, Luke, you were saying he was in the box of Freddie, like, game three. Maybe he's like, you know, I won three in a row now. Should be, oh, fuck, I'll coach Origin. Let's yeah. see what I can do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, But – so you're Ivan, right? Yeah. No one's ever done four in a row. Or not yeah. since Dragons. <laughs> I don't know. What if, what if I don't think he like I reckon uh, he is. I reckon he's a fucking proper weirdo. Well, he's gotta go he's gonna go after it. Fucking of course he is. Yeah, like, yeah. Why, why not? You've still got that you've only got probably about two or three years left of that window of dominance. Yeah. I think. Because you're gonna have Clear, you're gonna have Luai, you're gonna have Edwards. Edwards, shout out to Edwards, 300 plus meters. Dog. What absolute weapon. He was he was he my Clive stop. Churchill. That's before the difference half-time. between him and Walsh. That's the difference. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um yeah, but clearly, like, I don't know. Like, as I said, he can still coach Penrith, mate, mm. maybe, yeah. and do Blues. If you get that opportunity, I think you do both. So, and I think Ricky will do both. He's the only club coach for me that I would, if you, if I'm looking at it for New South Wales, going, I want him to coach. Yeah, I agree. Because it's going to be fucking – Why not? 35% of his fucking squad anyway. So and they run Penrith shape. Who better to run Penrith shape than <laughs> Ivan as coach? Like, don't overcomplicate the system, right? Origin's <laughs> all about just like just being tough mentally and everything yeah. like that. You know, you're not coaching the Teddies and all those sort of blokes mm. and Clearies. You're just giving a little bit of structure. Just play like play what you see. Yeah, just tough. Have pick tough people. Pick Origin players. You're not doing the job that you're doing at Penrith, right? You got to teach some average. Some some are like you know average sort of players. Mm. He's making them play above average. Oh, That's what good coaches do. Oh, 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 I played golf with Sammy Burgess um, yesterday, um, Mace, and, yep. and he was. He, we were talking about he went into camp for um, – and this is a massive rap from Sammy. Mm. Uh, he went into camp uh, for Origin 1. Freddie invited him. And he goes, the intensity that Penrith train with in everything Every that they day. do in their application is – you can see why they're great. Yeah. And they was talking about That's Twitter. What you hear. He was talking about Jerome. He was talking about Bizza. Fish, a house. He goes, when they compete edge on edge, they're trying to win everything. And he goes, That's why they win everything. Yep. And he I goes, And he goes, And that was against every other player that was in that squad from every other team. Yep. Roosters, South, yep. I don't know if the Bulldogs players in there, fucking whatever, whatever it may be. Penrith players train completely different to everyone else. Um, so shout out to Ivan for me. Mount Rushmore is Wayne Bennett, Craig it's Bellamy, Ivan, and fourth is still to be determined. I think Ivan yeah. has locked his. Well, if you got, yeah, both those. Robo, right big shout. Um, all right, um, just quickly want to get on the uh, NRLW Grand Final, mate. We were there for the, for that. Um, Jamie Chapman scores three for the Titans. Yeah. Similar, similar yep. flow, eh? The, the Newcastle started pretty well. Titans went on a bit of a run, and then the, the now, brilliance of Tamika Upton. If you don't have Tamika Upton in Newcastle, she's a weapon. Yeah, you don't. You're not getting to a grand final. She is. An she's that weapon. good. Like she, the whole. If I was the Titans, wherever she was, I'm double. I'm doubling. Yeah, I'm putting an extra person over there because I'm just thinking, whatever, go the other way. You, you're going to solve it anyway. You were but critical when, yeah. of some of the reads, but like, great players do that, mate. Yeah. At any level, right? And yeah. she's a great player. She is. She's outstanding. Like the two fullbacks from Newcastle, you take them both out. <laughs> They're not making finals. <laughs> <laughs> take it hey, easy, yeah, Newcastle. Hey, take no, it no, easy, no, no, Newcastle. No, 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 come on, come on. No, I'm serious. What about all the punters coming up? All the fucking punters are. Where's Gambos? Oh, shut up. Yeah, when we, after the game, <laughs> we had uh, heaps of Newcastle. There was, so many, there, was, heap? there was heap of Newcastle, Newcastle and Warriors. Newcastle stand up, man. Newcastle Warriors. and Warriors. 
There was, I reckon a lot of Warriors fans would have gone there expecting to make it. But even like Newcastle been knocked out for two weeks now. Damn. There was a shitload the, of Newcastle fans. fans. They just and like, everyone was screaming out again. It was fucking damn. hilarious. But uh, back to Tamika. Mm. Um, we've only got a short body of work to, to judge the NRLW on. It's been happening. It's been The competition's yeah. been here since 2019, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, whenever you talk about the the best players in that short span, it's Ali Brigginshaw, but to make up right now, she's right like now. Nath, Nath Cleary now. Where and it's probably at at its hardest right now. It like is. In the it is one hundred percent at its hardest. Semi professional, and it's going to get way yeah, better. And she's she's that person. Yeah. When I watch the NRLW, uh, and this is the way I try to explain it for people that might not watch it or or, or might not be a fan, and you and if you're not a fan. It's totally up to you. I enjoy watching it. I enjoy having a gamble on it, pun on it, responsibly, of course. Um, but the way I look at it, it's, it, it's almost like a throwback to the 80s. I say this to everyone where it's like um, they don't really have the um, evasion yet, which the current players have, and they don't fully understand the shape and systems yet because they're only five years into their existence, mm. right? It's going to take time for that. And another thing, they haven't fully molded into physically how they're going to be as NRL players are. Yeah. What I mean Some by have. that, when you look at Tamika Upton, there's yeah. not much about her. <laughs> she's like a, a throwback. She's my leg. She's like a throwback fullback from the mm. 80s in that, right? So in, like I, I went and watched my goddaughter play um, last year. She played in a final against the Marys, uh, Marylands versus Samaris. And like you can see two to three girls from e from every both teams that are like, fuck, they're going to be, yeah. they're nice. They're nice. So they're going to – you need about five years of this cycle before they start to come through the system and be like out and out. Oh, shit, she's a, a six. She's a center. And they train towards being uh, – because at the moment – they're more touch players that are playing NRLW. Yeah. Or they might have been bigger girls that, you know, weren't mobile enough to maybe play other sports. You know, you see some of the big girls out there just truck it forward, yeah. like old school front rollers. So once they develop like more of a attention to detail with training that, in, in three to four or five years, mate, this competition is going to get better. The product's pretty good. There is. So it's shout out to the get girls. Better. Well done, girls. Um, Titans nearly had them. Oh, um, I was I was on Titans. I, I lost all the three. The only reason I was on Titans because you were on Titans. Yeah, and then yeah. I realised I'm a Newcastle boy and went, yes, go yeah. to Newcastle. Go to Mika. <laughs> she was outstanding. Um, yeah. She's such a good player and she, she will go down. She's in that middle yeah. part of her stage now where she's won. So she won three competitions with the Broncos. I believe she was a fullback for all three of those years. Someone mm. might be able to correct me. She had a year off when the Roosters won it. Uh, they played the Dragons, and then she's won the last two now Jeez. with uh, Newcastle. Oh, wow. And she's gone back-to-back -back, uh, Karen Murphy medal winners. Um, Which is the Dally M. Yeah. Huh? Equivalent yeah. to the Dally M. Uh, the Clive Churchill. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then okay. she won the NRL D Dally M too. All right. Just yeah. Just knocking, beating our girl Taryn Aiken. All right, let's get to the grand final, mate. Um, I've gone down and broken it into um, two halves and critical moments, mm. um, and, I'll, and I'll read them out there. So in the first five minutes – Biggest moment, I think, really kicked off the game. Leota goes, runs straight through yeah. the chest of Paddy Carrigan. Um, I wrote down that Leota looked like he was struggling in back play after that. But then Herbie Farnworth drops the ball and it's the first opportunity yeah. where Brisbane Broncos just hand the ball to Panthers' cheap possession. Like five mate. times, didn't they? Mate, the, they, they completed it like 65. I'll get it yeah. up here. Um, I, was, I was just listening to the stats last night when Cooper Cronk was saying it. Penrith completed at 97%, mate. Yeah. They're lucky. 20, 27 from 38. To come in at 8-6, that's ridiculous. That's why, that's, why I think, that's why I think Brisbane come out in the second half with that much belief. They're mm. like, we just held the best team to eight points with, with all these stats being rattled out to them. Yeah. Like we just need to complete the ball, get in the good field position, and we'll score. You know what we were saying in the first ten minutes, mate? I said this feels like Origin One. New South Wales have all the ball momentum. Mm. Queensland make a few errors, yeah. and they couldn't quite get over the line. Penrith, and people were critical of um, Nath. Uh, I, I seen some some messages, and, and and in and around the stadium, they're like, "What's fucking hap Nath happening with his kicks?" And I was like, "He's doing that on purpose. Yeah. What they're trying to do is they're trying to pin Broncos in there." In their own half, they wanted seven sets, and, and they didn't want to. Yeah. I think Broncos. I haven't looked at the stats, but just the eye test again. This year, if you give Broncos seven tackle sets, which happens in the second half, which we'll get to, then they go bang bang. Mm. And uh, Billy Walters gets a forty twenty, and That's then big. and then and then Farnworth just misses Jesse Arthur's. It was just slightly behind yeah, him. I, even if he does catch and pass, you think Tano? Fuck Penrith are coming yeah. over big time. He's getting pumped out. Well, I think we get a better look at it regardless, right? Yeah. So that pass was just off. And then that was it, mate. Like 
Um, after that, Penrith completely dominated yeah. possession. They played pedestrian. They played early. Like they kept yeah. on dropping players under. They kept going to the other side of the ruck to try and get exploit Reynolds, right? But it would look so like, like sort of – Early. Yeah, it was really early. So they moved Brisbane's defence around really yes. well. And I think that was the plan. And they fatigued the fuck yep. out of them. They were like, after like 12 minutes, you can see Billy Walters, you can see Flegler and all these guys, hands on hips, all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? And they're always big on that. Clubs are big on that. Trainers are big on that. Body language. But it was hot as fuck out it there. Was fuck, it was man. an awful day for football, right? And Penrith just kept the ball in play, right? I'm not sure if it was on purpose, but it sort of looked like it. Come this way, go the other side of the ruck, try and get it, like, just say, like, Payne Haas on the other side of the ruck. Try and get it, Reynolds. If you can, Fisher Harris probably got it, Reynolds, like, 10 times. Mm. Make him tackle, make him tackle, be in tackle, bump him off, elbows in the face, all that sort of shit. Get Jordan Ricky Just to come annoy in. the hell out of him. You know what I mean? Like, get Capel, not Capel, um, Sorensen, at him, at mm. him, at him. And I think they were just doing that just to fucking get the fatigue factor. It was late, a flame. Late in the second half. They played the long game, just say in the first half, just mm. build pressure, build pressure. And I'm like, fuck, it looks very methodical, right? It was. I Yeah, watching it back, I, 100%, I reckon you're yeah. spot on. You look – so from the 15 to 20-minute mark, Staggs goes up for a ball. Staggs was unbelievable, by the fucking way. I thought hard, could, Tony Staggs was fucking so strong. Made one mistake. He, he makes a, a critical error. He goes up, doesn't play the ball, right? Why doesn't he play the ball right? Yeah. Fatigue. Fatigue. He was fucking tired. He was running the ball so hard, but they were defending for long periods. Kenny scores a try off a Farnworth bat back. And why do you think that is? No comms. But look at look at Walsh. Look why? where Walsh is standing. Because he's fatigued. They're fatigued. And he's fullback, right? So he had that playoff, right? And that was fuck. You'd be so disappointed if you're yep. Brisbane. And he knew it. And he just sort of thought that's not gonna happen. That's the worst case scenario. You see he Paddy look at him. He needs to be there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like he's he was in the end goal with his hands on his hips. You don't even have to be in the fucking line. He's with, uh, uh, but you don't have to be in the line. Yeah. Your middles and your edges are still defending for you. Yeah. Like, mate. Just I don't that. think he's the only one, though. I think, yeah, but that's his fucking you, play. That's whenever his Whenever you go up for, it, for a play like that and Herbie knocks it back, but you know why? That's his No communication. Yeah. But that's his job. Why? They're Fatigue, fucked. But I'm sorry, that's his job. He, yeah. he would be so pissed off at himself because he for thought, sure. how the fuck? Fuck. You could see sure. it. Looks like, but that's his job. It's no one else's job but him. Yep. And you can see it's just like, oh, damn. And that was a fatigue factor. They just kept burying him like that. And so we were all sitting there going, momentum's going to change. Momentum's hard to get, right? Mm -hmm. Penrith had it all, but the Broncos were propelling them easily. Um, they get a little bit of ball back straight after that. Kenny is indeed the one of the player that makes the mistake. Um, mm. And then it leads to like a back and forth for a little bit. And then there was the no uh, – probably the only – I want to give a shout out to uh, Adam G. I thought it was – Yeah, he was really, outstanding. I thought he ref the, the game perfectly. It's a bit frustrating again as a punter, like when you don't see this sort of game ref this way, where you just let the boys play. And he let them play. I think he missed a call. Uh, on Taruva. Taruva doesn't play Cobo. I don't think Cobo was going to get yeah. there, but you don't give him an opportunity. And I think that was the only blemish on the game. Other than that, I think it was, I thought he reffed a really good game. Um, so that happens after the Kenny try. And then who knows, um, maybe they get even more momentum so going into Taruva halftime. played at Cobo, didn't he? Taruva just fucking pushed yeah, Cobo off, off the, the ball. ball, which and is a penalty. It was a penalty. It mm. should have been a penalty. It should have given him an opportunity because um, they didn't make, that was their only error. Yeah. Kenny, he was the only guy that made an error the entire game and that didn't give the Broncos an opportunity to uh, get back into it. Then um, then it gets into a bit of back back and forth. Walshie makes that error where in the exchange with Cobo when he's out the back of the shape yeah. when Ren gets hit. Um, that was weird. And then what else happens from that? Kenny Walshie goes cross field, goal drags in. Oh, and then, then they go down the field. Walsh, uh, Ren puts the, the ball out on the full, 8-0 yeah. to off the back of that set. So like a real crucial period there, that 20 to 25, when you look back on it now, um, it was, um, yeah, super crucial yeah. because they lose by two points. Mm. Um, that's, the, yes. that's almost the game there, right? Then 30 to 35-minute mark, I wrote down – Edwards is fucking relentless on kick returns and Panthers wingers don't get enough credit yeah. for the way they defend. So mm. Toto especially. Jeez. Taruva was just as good, mate. On Toto's movement with the ball, like when they had those three on twos and you see the Walsh and that's his pet play coming around that edge, even Taruva on that other side. They just come up, hold, hold, hold straight and then move. It was Mace, brilliant. I want you to go fucking in detail brilliant. for me. I want you to go in detail for me. One of, I, I believe the hardest shape to defend right now in rugby league is 
beautiful, long, shifting shape from halfway. Why? Because the thought process from defenders and teams is you got grass, so let them defend. Yeah. The way that both wingers stayed intact with their centres but also made play on yeah. either the centre or the winger – was as good at defence. If you're a winger, you go and watch Taruva and, and but have a look defend at, at Have a look at the centre's defend as well. Outstanding. The shape that Critter was in and Tungo, Tungo was outstanding. Agreed. Outstanding. I was Agreed. thinking last week we was like sort of sceptic on him because he wasn't Carrying like, an injury. like he was now. Yeah. Right? As, as you said, like put that all in for one game, you yep. see that. Critter, and they stay in those lanes, right? So like Critter sort of jams on him a little bit. He'll come up. But it gives time for him to slide as well. So Toto's in line with him, mm. right? And and Taruva's in line with Tongo. And then they just move with the ball. Yep. It's brilliant because it's most brilliant. wingers really fuck it up because they'll yep. come in no man's land where you see just where Toto spooked. is yeah, where Toto is standing is right near the like in the middle of the ball. And you, see, you can see if he goes short, he comes in. If he goes long, he either intercepts it or he goes and moves to the inside hit. Nailed it every it's time. It's brilliant. Yep. It's actually brilliant. If you have a look at some wingers, they just fucking don't know what they're doing most of the time. 80% of wingers And it's because of the know. combinations with their centers. Yep. And you you just you do what your center's doing. If your yep. center's staying straight, you stay straight. If he comes in, you come in. That's the rules out there. Yep. You know, if he comes in like that, paddle, 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 go. It's fucking clockwork, man. And shout out to Herbie Farnworth. He was doing that shit as well. Herbie... Jesse Arthurs, Katoni. Jesse Arthurs was outstanding. They were all outstanding, man. I thought Cobo was quiet. Cobo was the only one we all, I would have thought, like, they could have used a couple of big carries. Yeah. He took a couple of fucking They're short side options. Like, they back five. Era. Like, I expected Walsh to get in there and have that mentality like he did in Origin 1. Yep. Like, will I tough it out and run those, those, those hard lines? He had two runs for eight metres within 30 minutes. Yeah. Within 30 minutes. I don't want that. I need him attacking the ruck. Like, getting the ball because he was like, what did I say last week? He needs to be holding shape out wide. So, like, they can come in a little bit or he needs to be taking the ball on, taking on, like, uh, Leota and that when they're getting a little bit fatigued, Fisher-Harris. Yep. He's the worst one to fucking come. I don't want him to run. Yeah. So, as a middle, you're like, I can handle Cobbo. I can handle Jesse Arthurs, which was hard to handle. Yeah. Like he, but he runs straight, right? Yeah, Jesse yeah. Arthurs is a big boy, man. Yeah, yeah. Katoni's a big boy. They want that contact. That's one Walsh, of the best games I've ever Walsh seen from Jesse Arthurs. Once fucking he's got footwork and he can either fucking run through you. But I just want him to get the ball. Mm. So I was like, I was disappointed not seeing him just really attack that middle. For sure, for sure. I think he, 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 he back into the half. I expected him to do what he did: line breaks, all that sort of shit. Everyone's fucked. He'll have a lot of. He'll he'll be uh, he'll be wanting the season to start as quickly as possible. Yeah. Walshy, um, thirty-five to forty minute mark. Lenu again, only one error in the entire half. One penalty from the Panthers, and this is the first time they get good ball. Mm. Jersey Fleckler goes straight through the guts yeah. of them. So. The plan, in a way, worked perfectly because how dangerous were the Broncos? Anytime they got in good ball, they fucking yeah. – they and made I them think pay. That's like, you have a look at that game. Like I look at the game as like the 40 minutes was dominated by Panthers and the second half was like 20 and 20. Yep. All right, let's you know get I mean? to that then. Second half, 40 to 45 minutes in. Cleary first. His first – again, this is – I'm thinking, talking about errors because there's fuck all from Penrith. Mm. He misses his first kick. That comes off the boot too long. He thought he had Walsh. He had a position. Yeah, puts right. it dead. Seven tackle set. What happens? Mm. Ezra Mam goes straight through. And Ezra Mam hadn't touched a ball yet hardly. Three on three on a short side. Mace, what did we say the week before? We are talking about it. When you get into shape, and I want you to explain this after. So many times my job as a back row was to run exactly in between the three men and the four men, which is, for people that don't know, the, the halfback and the back rower mm. to make sure that they're at marker so a middle gets to the short side. Broncos get it. They get Lindsay Smith at A, but not many people. I reckon he's in the 5%, 10%, the Munsters, the Mams, the, the Daily Cherry Evans that can take advantage of a three-on-three, three, a wide three-on-three three, Ezra Mams slices straight through yeah. Lindsay Smith. Yep. I mean, Lindsay Smith, he's like – his only job was to come up square – on Ezra Mam mm. and just track the inside hip. So it's where where he was situated, right? He got freaked out, had to come on that on that short side. Yep. His body language is going out to the right, he comes off there, Ezra Mam goes bang, puts pressure on Cleary because it's like bang, palms Cleary off, runs the distance, mm. right? So like if he had that moment again, he would have come around, stop on the inside of uh, Ezra Mam. Yep. You want Ezra to try and beat you on the outside. You know he's got a mad left foot. I think Cleary was tied up at marker on this yeah, one. Yeah, was it's, it a marker? It's, it's the second tries I think he gets involved. Oh, someone might yeah, correct us, yeah, but I but believe like, it was come the up, tongue just, I was on the outside. Just come on and, the inside here yeah. and then make Ezra Mam go on the outside. You just yeah. don't put, you don't go square on these guys because yeah. he's going to take you out here. Yeah. You gotta, 
oh, you got you got to cut one of them off. So you're trying to if you're Lindsay Smith and this is so hard to do, mm. would you prefer to get uh, Ezra Man coming back off his left yes. foot because he, he beats him on the saying, outside? Like, just say if you're Ezra Man, I'm starting here. Yeah. So when you're coming around, you're fatigued and everything. I don't want to be here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I got to be here. So like, I want you to take me on the outside. Yeah. I want you to take me on the outside. So yep. so I'm going to be here. And then I'm going to be coming off square and then tracking your inside hips. I want you to come off your left yeah, because that's your weapon. You're not going to beat me on the outside. I'm going to try and get a legs tackle then. Mm. And then the, then the center and that help you. What about how he just fucking burnt Dylan but Edwards? But he's just too? so quick. That's what, about what I mean. Dylan Edwards, he's one of the best positional fullbacks yeah. in the competition. He, d- he didn't even have to the, – the palm wasn't required. No, no. He, and you know the brilliance of that kid, man. Like to, to swap hands mm. in full flight. Yeah. Most people don't want to do that. But he had it out there ready. Didn't have to do it. But, like, you think lesson learned. Ezra Mam's coming. <laughs> Guess what? We've got, we got more coming. We're going to get to it. Um, again. Sorry, you, again, you figure Cleary out. is a gun defender and he would have been pissed off that he missed that tackle. I don't think he was in that one. He's coming up. There's a couple more Are coming sure? up. Yeah, because it was Lindsay Smith got to A, Isaac Tunga was on the outside, and then it was um, was a Toto on the right. Yeah, Toto on the right. Yeah. So he got tied up at marker. They ran in between um, – who's the right edge back rower? Uh, Liam Martin. Liam Martin and Cleary were at, uh, were at marker, I believe. Yeah, all right. I know, I know he gets dusted in the next two because I got it in the notes. Um, then, again, Cleary, we talk about how you win back momentum and this is why Penrith didn't want to do this. Panthers are offside off a Cleary bomb. Then yeah. they get another leg out. That's rare. Then um, Luai is replaced by Cogger. The offloads finally stick. Uh, Payne Haas drops one out the back. He finds uh, Keenan Palacia. Keenan Palacia whips a fucking beautiful yeah. ball against the ruck, hits Ezra Mam on the run, three, um, and he goes between Yo and Cleary. Yo, so Yo is that the one? Yo is defending outside Cleary. He gets him with that left, That's it. That's comes him. back yeah, on okay. the inside. Yeah. Cleary doesn't get there, doesn't shut the gate, goes straight through Ezra Mam number two. That's the one that he should have stopped. Yeah. Because he had a fair, he had a fair hit at him for sure. Yep. Even Yo, Yo would be disappointed. He's a good defender. Yep. But these are, this just shows how good Ezra Mam is. Sharp. He was, and he had full gas too. Because in the first half, he weren't doing that much. It was just all the forwards. He's like, fuck, just give me my moment. Give me my moment. I'm going to exploit these guys. And he would have been going, get the fucking ball here. Give me the ball. He was on bang. Fire. He was on fire. That um, foot is dangerous, man. Fuck, like Ezra Mam's twenty versus 20. Cleary's twenty. Yeah. Like they could, oh. if you, if you have them in separate grand finals and they both win, right? Yeah. So like Broncos go on to win. Nate does this in another game. You could be com- you could be comparing twenty minutes of a grand final, going like he should have won the Clive. Yeah, we're, if, we're if the Broncos that. win, but Nate does what he does in the next twenty minutes and they win the Clive. Like you, it would be interesting down the if they didn't happen in the same game and one of them lost. It was so weird. It was what, like watching two games in yeah. the second half. Yeah. As I said, I was like. Watching it back on K, four, four K, quarters. I'm just like, what's happening here? It's four quarters. Like it was Ezra Mam show and then Nathan Cleary <laughs> show and then the most yeah. devastation I've ever seen. So yeah. let's go for the next try. All right, the 55th to 60th minute, Walsh slices through for his probably his own his two big moments That's of the second Cleary's half. He's coming up to sh- Cleary to shoots out of the line, gets spooked. Shout out to fucking Walsh's left foot, oh. by the way, and the acceleration after it, like. Fuck. We it's talked like we Christian talk, McCaffrey. We talked about it shit, with um, the NRLW how Tamika spooked plays in the NRLW. Mm. This is a whole other level. This is NRL. This is, Grand this is Nathan Cleary. Yeah. And, good and, because of, and because of what Reese Walsh offers, he shits himself, tries to shut it down, and gets absolutely dusted. At this point, all those naysayers for Nathan Cleary are right. Mm. All of them. Can't play big moments. Can't play Roger. <laughs> They're all the watching book, it. The book was written. Everyone's fucking texting on social media. It's clear he ain't it. Clear he ain't the guy. Buzz had it out. He already, was already halfway through the Everyone argument. He just re- needed a headline. Everyone was ready to go. And, <laughs> and then Ezra Mam, again, he, backing up. he's backing up through the middle and he scores his third. Yeah. And that during that period, was it Liam Martin that he come off as well, like Liam Martin. So he went inside Cleary and Liam Martin. No, no, he went. He um, was that the one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he come because he, he was right for. Yeah, Martin. Martin was, couldn't. Martin couldn't get there. That was madness. These are, was. Mate, these are again, and we're going to we're going to get the best th- defenders. Like three men and four. Martin's the best defender, four men in the whole game. I agree. 100%. And, and I think Cleary's the best three men. I agree, hundred percent. And to do that in that moment, I'm Bruce like, Walsh. And I was thinking, game over. Game over. Um, so and then this is what else happens in that minutes in that fifty five to sixty minutes and this is why how do they win? 
Yo leaves the field, HIA. Yeah. Right? They're rattled. He goes off. That set, Cogger strips the ball from Payne Haas. Captain's challenge fail. That's a terrible challenge. This is all <laughs> in – yeah, it was awful, Captain's challenge. Um, and then Broncos are looking like they're about to score again to ice the game. Somewhat, um, Critter jumps on the ball. Loose ball recovery yeah. from Critter. Not only does he jump on the ball, he gets up, pops it to who's Leota, it? who who's runs another it? 20 Leota. metres. This is the start of the comeback. This is why Leota's a dog yeah. and this is why fucking Critter's a dog. Yeah. And this is what Penrith th – that moment is what won them the grand final when you look back on yeah. it now. so Because I was trying to look for like momentum switches. I'm like, that was when, it. Does it, when does it change? I'm like – Oh, that rotten ball and just bounces fucking nowhere. They were and six like and they could have and they could have jumped fuck. on it. Someone jump on it. Critter, bang. No urgency from the Broncos player. So it goes out the back of Palacia. There are players sort of in and around it. They don't sprint jump to the ball. It, Critter shows more urgency. He shows urgency to get up. He finds uh Mosliotta. Runs, runs another 15. Um and then off the back of that, Cleary slices through a gap. From who? Who's Ezra the big boy? Mam. Yeah, but yeah, but who's the big boy fucking supporting again? Oh, Moses Liotta. Let's get to the defensive side of yeah. it though. Ezra Mam has, has has had a Clive Churchill twenty minutes. He gets the blinkers on, only sees Liam so Martin. Ricky. No, so was it? Uh, the Capewell. Capewell yeah. was defending at, at four men on the left edge. Capes can't get there. Cleary dusts through the big fella again. Yeah. He's there for the loose carry, for Critter. And he's there pushing up through the middle for Nate. Grand Nath. final try, man. Grand final try, Moses Liotta. Unbelievable. Gets him back in the game. Next set. Well, sorry, what are you thinking at this time? It's happening? I'm yeah. not. I looked at I looked I started looking at live odds for Clive Churchill for Nate. <laughs> he was paying 17 bucks. <laughs> like but then you, I'm like, like you would. Like you would. Because I'm a degenerate. <laughs> oh, fuck. So I start looking and I go, nah. Sure. That's what I did. Surely not. I went like this. I, went, I looked at it. It was 17 bucks and I went. So we, we were sitting there nah, watching it with it. the great Gordon Tallis yep. and it's like we just rode that roller coaster. And I'm sitting there going, I did back Penrith. Yeah. But I'm like, I'd like to see the Broncos finish this off because I don't think Penrith would have been nearly as shattered as Brisbane. They're like, you know what? We got beat by a better team. Yeah. I not, agree. We got one hand on this fucker and we let it go. Yeah. Like, I just think like I was like, I don't want to see that devastation to anyone because it's no. fucking crippling. Yeah. Like you understand it. Yeah. Like you you could feel that. You could feel yeah. it. Like, yeah. um, and I just thought I'd rather see the Broncos win this. I'd like to see a comeback from Panthers to make it look fucking mad. Reasonable. Like I saw it. Uh, I'm not like, reasonable. Respectable. Just, yeah. Put some respect. And I'm like, this one try, I'm like, oh. The then I looked at the clock. I'm like, yeah. fucking hell. He's got a lot of time to play with. And they manage the clock so brilliant. Guess what he does next set? 40-20. Yeah. Whips it back around. Cobo. Again, again, Mr. Simon from Cobo and, and Reese yeah. Walsh. I reckon those two guys in particular will be like devastated with the games with because the, with, they'll never watch that game you, you again. You can't, well, you know, like I, again, I'm nowhere near the stars they were, but I could, couldn't watch back the grand final. No. And uh, I can't even remember if I had that bad of a game, but I know I was, I'm not the level that those guys are, so they'll be mm -hmm. uh, hurting for sure. 65 to 70 minutes, massive tackle. And I thought this – was a moment for the Broncos. Hetherington on Leota mm. when they had all the ball after that 40-20. That was mad. Hetherington chops Leota for – Leota should have scored his yeah. second. Um, but then the next set, Carrigan drops the ball on halfway. Beautiful shift, nice shape. Cogger plays nice and square out the back to Nath. Early ball to that guy, that dude, the most clutch player mm. in the last three to four years, Stephen Crichton. Just unbelievable. You know what I mean? You know what I like – you know, it'd be super annoying every time like Brisbane made a mistake. You could see Penrith just growing and they stand over you mm. and they fucking scream at you in Yahoo and you can't do shit about it. You just made a mistake. You mm. see Liam Martin going, yeah. And you're like, fuck off. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, and then that's why you see all the pushing and shoving because you hate that shit. The frustration. But then, but, but see Panthers, they all just run in, right? Mm. And hug each other and it's like, it's fucking demoralizing to you. Yeah. So I just dropped the ball on the captain. You know what I mean? It's like, fucking now, got, now we've got pressure on us again. And this is when it started happening. Yeah. You know, like that put the ball from Cleary was pitch, pitch perfect. It has to be. It gave him room to cook. Yeah. Could like, because Staggs is a gun defender. And he's like, am I going to beat him on the inside or the outside? Bang, got him on the outside. Too strong. Walsh comes across, like, not even making an effort. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he made an those, effort. Yeah, but like those good effort. fullbacks like yep. Dylan Edwards and Billy Slater's and that, they've fucking got that ball wrapped around. You're wrapped around that ball. There was space there. What about Dylan Edwards didn't make the play on Ezra yeah. Mam? Same thing. I'm like saying, no, no, it's different like yeah. that. Like when you're when you're coming across like that, where yeah. Critter is exposed, 
Most fullbacks get in there yeah. and they fucking have some sort of a, like some impact on that tackle. I yeah. know he was coming across. He had space to sort of chill out, pick, and, pick some real estate, get under the ball. I mean, okay. Yeah. Mate, I'm just saying. I just like, think it was a big play from. I'm big, more, more but it was a massive play from yeah. Crit. I'm just yeah. saying he's strong, big, strong. How like, strong is he, mate? Fucking, fucking got a good And then one, I'm just like, is he going to get the ball down? It's like, yeah. oh, bang. I was yeah. like, wow. Perfect grip. He's far out. Just, looks like a he tennis had, ball. He had to bring it like, just like his fucking arm here. Just yeah. like, oh, bang. Yeah. He's a basketball player. He reminds me of Felitti when Felitti used to carry the ball. Yeah, man. It's like he's got a fucking uh, tennis ball in his hand. He it around and went, bang. And I just, yeah, I think that try could have been stopped. Then while she has a big moment, he beats multiple defenders, goes on his best run of the night, cuts through. Reynolds plays short on the last tackle to Pierre Cora with about six minutes to go rather yeah, than putting – So I know what they're doing. So this is for, – for those that don't know, they're watching that play. You, so the plan is when you get – you don't want to give away a seven-tackle set. He's so you want to kick than that. You, that's pressure. You, you normally do that. This is, this is where they stuffed up. And Ren – again, this is one thing Ren will look back on. When you want to finish those sets where you don't put a kick in to not give away a set, it's got to be on the right or the left, right in the corner. They did it in the middle of the field. Yeah. Pierre Cora hits Pierre Cora on the on just outside and the what's post. What's he supposed to do? And then you've got – no, but my point is you've now got shape either side of the ruck. Yeah. So momentum, momentum, momentum. Crichton clutch again at the back end of the set, the, the kick we're talking about. Gets the ball, nothing doing, kicks it from 40 metres out, over the top, perfect touch. Walsh dives on it, Taruva over the top, Crichton puts him in goals. What do you think of that? Pressure, one? pressure. I like it. Six again. Oh, Sweet. Same. But I'm just saying, to, if you're going to go by the rules. Yeah, oh, if you're going by the rules. As soon as he gets touched, he yeah. should be held. Yeah. Like he got banged knees in the back. So and you was, like and it as was, well, though? But you, I like it. Yeah, I love so, it. Yeah. Because yeah. if you change the game there, it's a penalty to Brisbane. But they're not fucking coming out. But consistency, and that's the way that they rule. Yeah, exactly. But they haven't been. It's ruling a shit on. rule. Yeah, I know. Like I yeah. think I'm. I'm thinking momentum. He got hit once. He's not held. Yeah. You know, like so, like critters hit on that. Bang, gets him back in in goal. But like the play is, like if you touch that player anywhere, like just like that, you're held. Yeah, right. That's, is. that's yeah. the rule. That's right? the rule. And that's all players want. And that's what you know. Imagine what Brisbane's thinking. If we mm. get a penalty there, it's game over. We can get. We can get out. Get out. Or well, not game over, but they get not out game of time. over, yeah. but like just but going back sorry to that set, uh, the set with Reynolds, like he should have just put a kick in. I know he's scared of the seven sets. Yeah, he's fucking better than that. He's the best in the game. He's the short best kick in the game. game. Yeah. Just pop it over. Yeah, don't give it a Palisier there. Yeah, or at least throw it at the back to Walsh. Unless it was like ten meters out, bang bang, you can hold him in a corner. It was fifteen out in the middle. Fifteen of the out field. in the middle, and then you give Brisbane too much room, right? Yeah. And then look, look, look what happened. Yeah. Little moments like that where you expect Reynolds to put it over. Huge. Little thing, even if it goes out on the sideline yeah. or something, yeah. kick it on your like he's too. He's got in his trick bag. He's one of the best of all time. That. Wasn't it? Yeah, I agree. That was the wrong play from your best, your best, one of the best kickers of all time. Your leader. That was yeah. crucial. And yeah. you got to get your palace. What's he supposed to do? Hmm. He ain't going to push the pass. No, nah. no, 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 no way. Nothing. You know, you, try and, you just take the tackle and you're like, where the fuck am I? Yeah. Which is the right side of the post. He had Walsh out the back of the shape yeah. too. So even if he did want to keep or playing. He just like push Walsh out the back and then he can put a little kick in. Yeah. Or even pass, 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 get tackled out. Yes. On it's the fine. Corner. And then you're able to pump through for There was now. other plays there, man. I was just like, I looked at that and went, what the fuck is happening? Um, Cleary gets the foot down just in time. Another mm. massive moment. If that's Damn. if that's a centimetre off, a centimetre off, why don't Broncos you just, ball. Why, why would you even attempt it? It's going out. Yeah, him and Liam Martin after Fucking as well. Liam Martin was yeah. like, just don't touch the yeah, thing. Yeah. I was looking at Cleary. I said, why would you even tempt that? It was like the ball was out. I'm like, fuck. All right, whatever. It makes it look mad. Yeah. Yeah. He was, um, yeah, should have just. Or you put your foot out or nice just and earlier. fake it. No, you put your foot out <laughs> even earlier because you just got. The, I don't just know why they're trying it. to catch it. Yeah. Just knock it out. Yeah, I don't know, uh, mate. for better theatre. But you're in grand final. <laughs> and there's a bit of pressure on, so I sort of understand why, they, why they're get a little it. bit frazzled Even with the rule Because people book. think if he dropped it, oh, yeah. it's not counted. No, yeah. He could have dropped that, hit his hand, just as long as his foot's down. Yeah. Done. 75 to 80 minutes. So pressure, pressure. Again, Critter gets the ball in the back of shape, gets it off an offload, nothing's doing, puts a little grubber in. How he... Manages within a space of five meters. He got five meters to Daruva. The ball he, sits if he up, puts it, but it sits up, it sits up bang, right bang. on the line. And and Katoni Stags dives on it. Critter gets on top. Repeat set. Him, Next set. Time off the clock. That's the thing. Yes. You know what I mean? And, like, uh, everyone's. This is where you're looking at the clock, going, "Fuck, who's going to score? How are you going to score?" Brisbane were up for it. Mm. They, were, they were defending their asses. They off were fucking defended so hard until Nathan Cleary. Game so winner. many people miss those, those assignments again defensively. That's all I look at. I look at clear and go, yeah, gun run. But I'm like, 
That should have been solved. Yeah. You beat three fucking people stepping through the ruck. Yep. How does that happen? That would never happen in a normal NRL game. Ooh, but this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. Fatigue, the moment. Are you thinking clear he's going to run the best angle? But they made him run. He's like, what? Nothing doing. There's the dry line there. Mm. Walsh missed an assignment. Ricky going over too quick. I was just like, what Reynolds the, is first. What the f- – yeah, Reynolds, Ricky. Katoni comes up. Katoni comes up, tries to send him back in because Katoni was Which is his so job. Strong. But which is his job yeah. and he did the right thing. Yeah. Get Cleary going back into the ruck. Bang, dominate him. Go back to the play the ball. This is – again, this is what happens, mate. Fatigue and yeah. big moments. Ricky and Walsh are at market together. They trip on each other. Yeah. They're both sort of leaning left. They go to Cleary. Tony comes back in to send him back in. Ren misses, doesn't get up in time, misses. Jordan Ricky tries to come late. He misses, bang again. And then Walshy doesn't get there as well. And they're all just a bit much. Oh, it makes me. Makes me because, it gives because me, I know yeah. that they, they're, they're way better than that. Ricky's a gun defender, but he's been out there for fucking 75 minutes straight working his ass off. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like he Reynolds had a spell. Is there. He had a spell. He went off for a if little Reynolds, bit. Yeah, if Reynolds had to come straight off the line, he would have he ran into – Cleary would have ran into him. Doesn't come off the line at all. It's easy to say now. Yeah, mate. I'm just well, saying. I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah. this is how you break it yeah, down. Okay. If people at okay. home are like, if okay. he comes off straight against, if he brings, if he comes off two meters, he runs into Cleary. Yeah. If 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 Ricky just comes off the line, like he's going to squash Cleary. There's no gap. He doesn't get to mm. to to uh, to Walsh because Walsh's thing. He's on the left side of that ruck. Yeah. They go that way. He should have been there, but like. It should have been shut down twice before Walsh. Yeah. But Walsh is the last man. That's why he's fullback. That's why he gets paid the big big bucks. That's true. You know what I mean? Like he should shut shit like that down. That's fair criticism. You know what I mean? So I'm like, this is only – this is exact – I'm only not criticising. I'm like, this is how, yeah, they, no, should, that is. This is how cri- they should have played it. That's cri- criticism and critiquing, but we give flowers to players and this yeah. is what separates us and this is why I love doing it with yeah. players. We're, you're allowed to critique. This yeah. is what critiquing the game. He's going to look back on it now and he's going to be devastated. Yeah. Right? So that, there's no denying so I'm, that. I'm giving it to Cleary. But, I'm like, Cleary, gun, you, but they made him run that play. Yeah. Katoni comes up and it's like, fuck, that's shut down, right? Yeah. He shut down everyone. He did his job. Get him back into the ruck where you fucking know your ruck is going to take care of it. They didn't. Mm. And that's the play where everything's in. This is This is – what a game. You'll be thinking about this shit forever. Under the fucking post, you wouldn't game. even think about it. It was just like, holy shit, he's done it. Yep. Unbelievable. What a fucking effort. All right, now uh, in summation uh, for the entire game. Sorry, I'm going to say one more thing. Yep. The fucking kicking from Cleary. He got three from three. He had to kick three from three. That yep. first one out there, that and was wide. Bren was fucking four from four Come as well, on. I think. Yeah, I know, but like, that's just yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure, a, man. That's pressure. And he yeah, kicked every single one. I think I think Ren was three four from four or three from three. three. Uh, that's yeah, like, he didn't miss anything. None of them. That was sharpshooters. Yep. Four from four, Reynolds, and big kicks. And then Critter kicked one. Fuck. Elite. Elite play. I know the Broncos are going to be devastated. I know they, grand final, man. they had a great season. Penrith, it lived up to the expectations. When I think of grand finals – that had massive moments and big comebacks and you know, thought the other team was going to win. You think 2015, Broncos-Cowboys, 97, Knights yeah. versus Manly. 89 grand final. 89 grand final, uh, Raiders versus Tigers. Yeah. I think it's the best one I've seen. Yeah. Just simply because how like it just got broken down in that second half and the, and the weather and just like the fatigue levels on both teams. Fuck Penrith are fit. Fuck, they're fit. They're so fit, man. What a, what a I and I don't think so. You just say like their back five was outstanding. Brian Tyler was on one leg. Brian Tyler, he still point. probably nearly ran for two hundred meters. Yeah, Jerome everybody Luai doing what he did with his shoulders. Far he slept on Jerome Lewis. What he's done. If that was Cam Munster, if that was anyone else, and like, oh, it would have been Cam. Watch. Let's just see how he can get back from a dislocated shoulder. Yeah, they don't like Luai. Yeah, you know, I don't like the fact when he come off, they just kept showing him on the camera yeah. so they could boo him. Yeah. That's shit. Yeah. That is shit. Look, I get it. Yeah, Show get him it. fucking once. Okay. He's off with his shoulder. Okay. Don't come back to uh, like six minutes later. Show him again. Boo. They did come back to him when they were having celebrations and he yeah. was run on the field. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But like yeah. this, you're filming the whole bench. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, exactly I mean, right. Yeah, you're filming the you're whole right. bench, They were mate. just zoned in He's on zoned him. in on his Joey head. was sitting on the bench yeah. at the same time that he went to him yeah, once. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I'm just like, leave him alone. Because you know what? You're getting a reaction from the crowd. It's yeah. bullshit. But if there was anyone else, that was Cleary, if it was Munster, if it was Caleb. Ponga, 
anyone who, who they want the, the face of the league, mm. Tedesco, oh, let's go. Hey, what, what a brave effort. What a Matt. They give him his flowers. He just come back and won a grand final. No they really fucking hate it. No they hate really it. No talked about, eh? Yeah, I'm with you. And 60 minutes he got out, they're just charging at him. What an effort. Mace, um, what a grand final. What yeah. an episode. Uh, here we go. The Australian team has been – all right. The Australian team has been named. Let's have a look at it. It just come up on Kempi's Bloke in a Bar. Um, Lukey has sent it to me here. All right. The Kangaroos has been named. The squad. This is a squad. Our boy DCE made it. Yeah, no. Josh Adokar, Paddy Carrigan, Daly Cherry Evans, Nathan Cleary, Selwyn Cobbo, Lindsay Collins, the dog of all dogs. Who's our favourite? Ruben Cotter. You Ruben Cotter. <laughs> um, I love that you got that straight away. Tino Fasuamala Awi, Jersey Flegler. Yeah, Harry Jersey Grant, Flegler. Payne Haas, Valentine Holmes, Ben Hunt, Liam Martin, Cameron Munster, Cameron Murray, Katoni Staggs, Hamaso Tabuai Fido, James Tedesco, Skipper, Jakey Javoyevich, and Isaiah Yo. Fuck, that's a good team. Mad. Firstly, I thought Katoni was, K- was going to play for Tonga. Maybe it was um, in the World Cup. Team. And I didn't think they were going to pick um, Valentine Holmes too because all the fucking off, yeah. off-field drama. So And, yeah, I thought Fox is good too. Yep, it's Fox. Good to see, it's good to see they're picking and sticking. I said that. It's hard to get out of the Aussie team. That's a good and team, they've all, And they've all done the job for Australia and they're going to do, they're do it again. No Callum Ponga, no Reese Walsh. Damn. No KP. No Callum. That's what I mean. Loyalty for the Australian jersey is outstanding. And I love Mal for that. And I love the selectors because everyone just goes off current form and everything. They're going off the form from 2022, what you did in the World Cup for us. Mm. And it's hard. Mel's always rewarded. Yeah, guys always. So they'll give him this series, right? If we get beaten this series, this wholesale changes. Okay. Then the KPs and the Reese Walshers will be there for the next one if they're playing good enough. That's cool. So the makeup of the team most likely will look like, I believe, Teddy fullback. It'll be Selwyn and uh, Fox on the wings. It'll be Val and – oh, no, Hamaso. So there, so Hamaso's the swing player. Yeah. Hamaso's the 18th swing player, I reckon. Katoni Staggs and um, – Yeah. And, You're not um, picking Katoni on the bench. Right? Valentine just, Holmes, yeah. centres. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We'll get to that. Actually, we'll get to that on Thursday. Break it down on Thursday. Um, let us know how you thought about the grand final. Any grand final questions? We're back on Thursday. First episode of Mailbag. Let us know about the Australian team. Let us know probably the Kiwi team will be announced by then as well. And we'll break it down. We'll see you on Thursday. Yeah, nice.